Big 12 title hopes seem due. Quarterback Chris Sims felt otherwise. Like the rest of the team, he began to mature. Led by Sims' 16 touchdown passes, Texas erased the Oklahoma memory with six straight wins. He had help. Freshman running back Cedric Benson swept out of Midland, Texas like a West Texas cyclone. He broke the Longhorns' freshman record with five 100-yard games. Chris Brown is the poster boy for Colorado's quartet of quality running backs. Working behind a fierce offensive line, Brown shucked more Cornhuskers than any back in history. When the demolition ended, he had gained 198 yards and scored six touchdowns. Now these two red-hot teams collide for the Big 12 title. Will it be a BCS bid for Mac Brown and Chris Sims? Or will it be Colorado coach Gary Barnett and the amazing Buffaloes who prevail here tonight? Here come the Longhorns. Game on, everybody. It's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. And the stakes were just raised as Florida loses to Tennessee. And now Texas comes ready to talk about the Rose Bowl and not just a BCS bid. Good evening. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger. Let's take you to the bottom line right away. Two big questions here to be answered tonight. Number one, can Colorado dominate again like they did against Nebraska? And can Texas beat a good Colorado team twice in one season? I bring in my partner, the answer man, Gary Danielson. Where'd you get those questions from, Sam Donaldson? I can't answer those. Let's start with Colorado. Can they dominate? Yes. They're a much better football team than Texas played before. One of the reasons is Bobby Pesavano. He has been hot. When he played Texas last time, it was his first start. He's completing nearly 70% of his passes since then. That makes that balance of run and pass tough to stop. All right, and of course, on the other side, Chris Sims. Chris Sims has got balance also, but where he has to attack is at the wide receivers. He's got the gun, and he's got three receivers that can exploit the matchup that really is the weakest for Colorado at the corners. Texas, Nebraska couldn't do it. Texas came. Now the Buffaloes. Gary Barnett did a remarkable job this year in guiding them to the Northern Division Championship. And now he will play for a BCS bid. Let's go to Jack Aru with Mac Brown. And Brent, just moments ago before the team came out, Mac Brown told the team about the Florida loss. Well, the biggest thing, Jack, when you got 60 minutes to become a champion for the rest of your life, there are no distractions. So this team's excited. Colorado's got a great team. Huge challenge for us, but with challenge, there's opportunity. Very few teams playing for championships tonight. So you didn't see it as a distraction to let the kids know that there's more at stake tonight. These kids have got a lot of maturity. They understand unless we beat Colorado, it hasn't changed since Sunday. There are no other things out there for us in the BCS. Brent? All right, Jack, and right now, let's go to the PA announcer for the National Anthem. And now to honor America, please rise for our National Anthem, as performed by 12-year-old Miss Brittany Holmes of Frisco, Texas, better known as Jerseys. Oh, say can you see What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed.
that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the It's a sellout crowd. It's Texas. It's Colorado. It's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship coming up. It's been a wild path for the Colorado Buffaloes to make it to this Big 12 Championship. Gary Barnett now with the upset just a couple of minutes ago in the SEC. So much more at stake tonight. Well, I think we all thought it might come down to this. Uh, doesn't make any difference, though. we got two teams that want to win a championship and should have a heck of a game. Do you change anything from the first time you played them? Oh, sure. Yeah. Don't make the same mistakes, I hope. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, Jack. All right, Jack. Our stage is set. Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. Usually the home of the Dallas Cowboys. But tonight, the site of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, David Pino. The ball on the tee, Texas winning the toss, and they have deferred, so the Buffaloes, under Bobby Pesimento, will go on the attack first. Our deep men, and Hollowell, of course, is the dangerous one. He's there with Sorrell. Hollowell is number five. He leads the nation in punt returns, and let's see if they punt away from him and try to keep it out of his hands on the kickoff. Underway in Irving, and they will go right at Hollowell from the two-yard line. Well short, spins free. Running a slant. Good return to the 27-yard line. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper lineups. Awesome offensive line. They dominated Nebraska. Andre Girard, Victor Rogers, both all Big 12. And the skill fellows, Chris Brown, pounded for six touchdowns. But they rotate a lot of running backs. And Daniel Graham is the focus of the defense for Carl Reese here tonight. They know they have to keep 89 under wraps. And it's Bobby Pesavino. Number four, who will move out behind Lucier. And you can see what he has done since the Texas loss. Six touchdowns and only two interceptions and better than 10 yards and attempt. And on first down, he'll roll right. Got away from Reddy. D.D. Lewis closing in, forced to throw it away. So D.D. Lewis and Redding make their presence felt on this defense of the Longhorns immediately. Corey Redding, named to the all Big 12 team. You can see why we rate him their number one pass rusher by far. D.D. Lewis is the man in the middle, poised to stop that simple trap play that killed Nebraska. 98G is the Colorado terminology. Jammer, jammer, jammer. No corner any better, folks, in college football this year. We come now to second and 10, and D.D. Lewis, the man in the middle. His 50th start, he gaps. They come power straight ahead. So the senior, Cortland Johnson. Carries, he's their first running back in this particular rotation. And this will bring up a third down now, the tackle by Everett Rawls. And that was 98G right there. Pull the onside guard, try to kick out. First play, Colorado tried to slip drum, the fullback, out to the flat. He did not carry the ball nor catch a pass against Nebraska. They're trying to establish the fullback. Three wide receivers. Brunson motions toward the line. Pesavento, he's got an open man underneath, and he hits Brunson for a first down. Well run pattern in underneath, and he broke free to the 40 yard line with three wideouts that time. Nice job by that Colorado offensive line, Brent. You talk about their dominance in the running game against Nebraska, but that time. Kyle Reese, defensive coordinator from Texas, brought five men on the first play. They tried to put pressure on Pesavento. They played zone behind it, and Pesavento had time to hit the crossing run. Page, Bates, Lucier there with Gerard and Rogers set down. On the first down, Johnson is hit in the backfield immediately by Maurice Gordon, the defensive tackle out of Mesquite, Texas. You know, we talked to Bobby Pesavento about what he wanted to accomplish in the first drive against the Longhorns. 
We need to set the tone of the football game because we're a real physical offense and we need to show Texas that we're going to be physical for four quarters. And you know, however many plays we get in the first drive, we got to show them that we're going to be a physical football team all day. A senior originally enrolled at Miami of Ohio for the junior college and on the boat. Something down that long now. And Pesavino's play fake is a beauty. The throw on the knees to the fullback drum. Drum twist three just short of the 50 yard line. So there is the play, Gary, that we fully expected to see here tonight. Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, knows how important the fullback is in the passing game. Absolutely. This game, you know Texas is going to be inside and try to stop that run game in here. You'll see the fullback trying to get out to the outside all day. Establish one thing, misdirection play, and let the fullback just slide out. They must establish another weapon against a very quick and fast Texas defense. Chris Brown. Checks in at tailback. Number 22, he's behind Drum. On third down, the toss play to Brown. Drum leads the way. Brown slant, first down, breaks free. 40, pushed out of bounds at the 36-yard line. And there's that man again, Chris Brown. He left his license plate all over the Cornhusker defenders. Well, give Chris Brown credit for reading this play. This was designed to go up between the tackles as we had a flag on the play. Yes, it does look like we got something. But he bounced outside, and that's why he's so valuable as a running back. Big, strong, and great eyes. John Laurie, our referee, yeah. says it's holding on the Buffaloes. Holding. Offense, 10 yards. We play first down. They were so late on that, the chains had already yeah. been moved. Yeah, now right. they got to bring them back in. And uh, this is a crew that sometimes will huddle up frequently down on the field before they announce their decision to the crowd. This is a, well, you might call them a patient officiating crew, or you might call them a slow crew. Depends on your <laughs> point of view, I think. Brent, when Gary Barnett talked to Jack about things he wanted to change from the last game, last game against Texas, Colorado had the turnovers, yes, but nine penalties in that football game also. He can't have a repeat of that. So the chain gang confusion is what we're waiting for here because they had moved down on the run. The umpire, John Leinbach, head linesman, Donnie Capral. And uh, check in on our game breakers here. All right, let's talk about what's going to determine this game. Control the line of scrimmage. The offensive line's not just running the ball, but also protecting the quarterback. Number two, protect the ball. Running backs, when you have it, keep it. Quarterbacks, throw it to your guys. And number three, Brent, C1 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> Control the line of scrimmage, protect the ball, and you got a great chance of winning this football game. I think we got another message coming up here. I mean, they still can't get it straight, and we're just underway. Wait, well, they don't know where to spot it. It was third and short. They're going to make it third it and out. 11, I yeah, think, is what they should like do that. here. That, that was third and three before, and uh, they'll make it uh, third and 11 now, I believe. The line of the game has been corrected. Third down. Third down. All Took right. a long time to get there, didn't it, folks? All right, they're close. All right, they're somewhere down there. The big thing is third and long here. Colorado is not made. Their offense is not made for third and long. The weakest part of Colorado's team is their wide receivers. The best part of Texas defense, their corners and safeties. Cormier goes out to the right. They'll slot. McCoy and Quinton Jammer, who's been assigned to McCoy, takes him head up. So they've got one on one with Jammer against McCoy. Pesavino will throw underneath and incomplete, and Colorado forced the punt. Sell out crowd and uh, an awful lot of orange on hand here tonight. In fact, I think Colorado probably feels that this is a, a road game as far as they're concerned. We do have some Colorado fans across the way, but they are they are badly outnumbered by the uh, Longhorn fans who managed to talk to their friends from Nebraska and Oklahoma and pick up those tickets that the uh, Cornhusker and Sooner fans fully expected to be using. Mark Mariscal, good punter. 
back, and Nathan Basher, one of the best return men in the country, awaits for the home. Picks it off the carpet, and booms a beauty to Basher. Right at the 11-yard line, and well short of the 20, and now Chris Sims. And the Texas offense will come out and put it in play. This line allowed 20 sacks, and Mike Williams is the big man over on the right side. Remember, Sims is left-handed, so he protects the backside. And here are your two difference makers. Cedric Benson, the freshman we talked about in the tees, and Roy Williams, all Big 12 wide out. And Colorado's scheme is to rotate everything, and here is what Sims has done since the OU loss, and it is magnificent. 16 touchdowns and two picks. Texas starts with three wide receivers in the game. Sims to throw it on first down. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. So we see part of the strategy right away against this Colorado defense. Justin Bannon made the all Big 12 team, and he'll give you that inside push. He's a fine veteran tackle. Joey Johnson replaced Jayshon Sykes, who arguably was the best defensive player in Colorado. And then Michael Lewis, number 31, all Big 12, one of the better safeties in the country. And last week he was paging Mr. Crouch, and tonight it is Sims. Now it is second down and 10. There'll be a little difference here tonight. Expect Lewis to blitz. He was not a blitzer against Nebraska, but he will be tonight against Sims. Second down and 10 now for Chris and the Horns. The delay is Benson. Breaks that first tackle as he usually does and makes his way to the 23. A powerful run by the freshman from Midlands Lee High School where they won three state titles consecutively. Second down, keep those three wide receivers there, hand the ball off, simple play, he runs right through Sneed this time. Roy Williams was right there trying to block someone, really didn't do much of a job, and the freshman just ran over guys to get it into third and short. In those three state title games, Mr. Benson scored 15, 15 touchdowns. He's one of the most ballyhooed running backs to come out of the state of Texas in years. Third down and short. Flag throw on the play. Benson bounces it outside for a first down, but there is a penalty flag as Lewis makes the stop. Another penalty for Colorado in this football game. Sibs does a nice job of drawing them off. Got that front. Stunting and he's taking advantage of it. Well, we see that Kyle Shanahan, the son of the Denver Broncos coach, has checked in as a wide receiver. He's a sophomore from Denver. Right, three wide receivers again. Every formation so far, except for short yardage, three wide outs in the game. There's Shanahan, number 87. And Sims will drop back and look again. Has got it. There's the playmaker, a difference maker at midfield. He was well covered, but he still slipped inside and made the strong catch. Well, you can see Texas believes they've got matchups to the outside that Nebraska could not take advantage of. Strickland, best cover guy for Colorado. Pair of fours matched up, but a perfect throw is going to win that one. So he's 21 yards on that pass. Texas first possession, they've got the ball at midfield, scoreless in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship as Sims of Texas, going to go for the home run, he's got a man inside the five-yard line, Sloan Thomas, the sophomore from Houston, and the Longhorns are in business on their first drive. Donald Strickland guessed, he thought it was going to be a post route, Sloan just went straight down, and an emerging player on this team, it used to be Williams. It used to be just B.J. Johnson, but Sloan Thomas is another weapon. You see Strickland, he's going inside, feeling it's going to be a post. Another good throw, and you see the matchups. Texas loves the matchups in the air in this football game. Trissel in is the blocking back. He shows power to the right side of the formation for Benson. And here they come. Benson, touchdown, Texas. They're on the board.
So everyone felt, as you see, even some roses showing up in the hands of Texas fans, everyone felt that the biggest mismatch in this game was going to be the Texas wide receivers yep. against the Colorado secondary. And Texas did not wait. They attacked from the get-go with three wideouts, and they make it pay off with the Benson touchdown. Now, Dusty Mangum. nails the extra point. You follow Matt Trissel, number 46, up front, Mike Williams, and Benson's got number one, Brad. Texas leads it. Timeout. You gotta love a thoroughbred that breaks from the gate quickly and then hangs on to that lead. And Mac Brown has done just that. Bebo says, nice going, gang. Let's keep it up. Second possession coming up now for the Buffaloes. Pino to kick it off. That's short. Sorrell runs up to the 20-yard line. Tripped up and down at the 29-yard line. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Chevy, the cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. Monster.com, who reminds you, job good, life good. And Capital One, who asked, what's in your wallet? Gary Danielson and Jack Arruda, I'm Brad Musburger. In case you have not heard, Florida stunned in the swamp today by an 18-point underdog. Talking about overlays, Tennessee doing a job, and now everything's up for grabs in the BCS. First down and 10, Pesamento and the Buffaloes. Pearl five. Let's take a look at what these two teams like to do. Three main attacks for each team. Texas like to run the ball with power, pocket pass, and then finesse with the screens and reverses. Colorado really makes a living with their power game and then the play action pass off it. The last thing they want to do is pocket pass. They must run the ball. There's a Texas injury at the 36 yard line. He was trying to stay in the game. That's why it is so late. And then uh, the Babers came over quickly to the sideline and uh, went down on one knee. We did see number 11. The freshman sensation Derek Johnson make that last plays out of Waco Texas and uh, like Benson he's the freshman defensive player of the year Benson yeah. the offensive player and, of the and year. how about this they're roommates they live together that ain't bad put those two guys in the same zone you watch Derek Johnson he's going to line up in the middle right there all the game right in the middle he's going to do it so Texas chases motion and they run back with purify and again Johnson and his friends are all over the play along with D.D. Lewis. So the veteran and the youngster, both of them on the field, and we saw that against Oklahoma a lot. What you must do against this defensive line, they're so strong, is you must get penetration inside. That's what happens right here. Thornton gets inside and blows these plays up before they get started. Then you can, the linebackers can clean it up. That's the speed of that front four or three, whatever Colorado dials up, and that's what they're going to try to do. Way off to the right goes Mr. Quinton Jammer and McCoy. They don't even look at it. He's going to try. And Jammer knocks it away. What a great play by a great defensive back, Quinton Jammer, who jumped all over McCoy. See it right out here. There's the matchup that Pesavento is trying to get the ball through. Jammer has been through it all. Jams him first and then follows inside and doesn't do the dumb play of grabbing him with one hand and knocking the ball down with the other. That's a confident senior that makes plays like that. NFL written all over this guy. Mr. Dick Vermeil, if you get a <laughs> shot, don't pass him up in Kansas City, my friend. Go get it. He's a shutdown corner as good as we've seen. Fourth down. And Colorado punts it away again. Here's Basher in the fly from the 18. 25, 35, and he's out of bounds. He is out of bounds at the 37-yard line. It'll come on back to the 37. So you can see Vasher, an electric returner. Texas with a chance to go to the Rose Bowl, and they're playing like it. Timeout. All right, here we go. Bowling with bodies right here. One, 
two, three, with one guy coming in right here. Watch this. One guy. Let's see if he can pick up the split. Boom, boom, boom. That's nice right there. <laughs> Bowling with bodies. Brent, you've done that before, haven't you? <laughs> uh, first down at 10 for Sims. Benson behind him. And again on first down. Throws and wide open in the middle is Williams again to the 37-yard line. Why not? Why not? If you protect Chris Sims and you've got three mismatches outside, you've got three guys. You can't double cover them all. Look at this. Just come in. Watch his throw. Oh, he knifes him with that throw. You can't do it any better. And, you know, this is AstroTurf, but even if it was money, that number one jersey would still be perfectly clean. First down and ten. Sensational Benson, and even after his hit, he kept going. And Jack, what a great high school career he had out there at Midland. Oh, Brent, you talked about the 15 touchdowns that he scored in championship games, three championships in a row. And you see the running style that he has. He said it was never any question as to where he wanted to go to school. And the reason was the style you see is exactly like Ricky Williams' style. He tries to emulate Williams so much so that he was, you can see from his hair, he wears the Williams dreadlocks. There they I just are. hope he doesn't wear his helmet when he gives interviews. Yeah, Jack, and uh, it is off the charts, I'll tell you. Averaging 183 yards a game. Sims, out of and incomplete. He had Williams breaking free that time. And, uh, of course, the one thing that you answer a great passing attack with is a pass rush. And someone, obviously, is going to have to blitz. So Texas has already scored once in the wake of Florida's shocking upset at home against Tennessee and now Tennessee will go on to the SEC championship game next week in Atlanta and then on the following day here on ABC we'll reveal the four BCS bowls and uh, tell you where everybody's going. Well five wide outs empty only used this two times last week against Texas A&M because it was so windy. Sims hit on the release this time, so he throws it off short, and there was down, and uh, you can see the official. And, yeah, I think Sloan and Thomas, stop. I think right. that ball skipped on that play, and, and that one, it was an incomplete pass. So you see the matchups. Now here is Daryl Drake, the wide receivers coach. He used to be the offensive coordinator at Baylor, just a fine fellow. He signals in the plays, and uh, he'll be talking to the wide receivers as they come off the field now over to the bench. And you see him to Sims. Uh, talking about it to use his head in that situation. And here is Brian Bradford, the punter. Holloway back deep, trying to give the Buffaloes a spark. Fair catch at the eight-yard line. And Pesaveno and the Buffaloes will put it in play there. In the early going, Texas has dominated. Time out. A first down. Success, you might say, <laughs> against the Cornhuskers, Gary up at Boulder. You don't need second and third when you do that on first. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Uh, but tonight, a little bit of a different thing as the uh, the Longhorns and Gary Barnett said to us all week long, yeah. look, this is a different defense. This is a much faster defense. And folks, because we're playing on a carpet that just accelerates the speed defense that the Longhorns have here tonight, Chris Bound will try it at running back. Pesaveno on first down, play action the fullback's hands incomplete and Basher the defender and uh, Gary Barnett uh, said that the one thing we got to do we got to score let's listen we got to put points on the board you know no one's really stopped Texas you can slow them down and that's I think that's our goal is to slow them down and then uh, our offense has got to be more productive than we were last time so and of course the other thing is when you're dealing with youngsters uh, how do you keep them keyed up like they were against Nebraska. Yeah, that's something that has to unfold. I think right now Colorado still isn't ready for the pace of this game. They're on second down, and they run right straight ahead. Beautiful run by Brown that time to the 25-yard line. So, uh, John Saunders, that Tennessee upset of Florida was something, my friend. Brent, it was, and the Burger King update shows that it shakes everything apart. Rex Grossman here trying to lead him to a game-tying touchdown. Carlos Perez, that brings him within two, two-point conversion. Looked like there might have been a hold in the corner of the end zone, but it's not called. 
So Tennessee pulls off the upset. They'll play in the SEC championship game, and Florida is out of the national championship hunt. Yeah, and uh, Gaffney was looking for the call, wasn't he, John, in the end zone on that play. And uh, Tennessee, very much alive. You wonder how the pollsters and the computers will evaluate that win in Gainesville and compare it with whatever Texas does here tonight. That's uh, That, of course, is a story that will still unfold ahead. So a lot of things still to be determined here by the BCS rankings, which, again, will come out on uh, Monday, and the Sports Center will have it over on ESPN. Chris Brown now. Second down for the Buffaloes. Play fake Pesavento. Avoids the rush on the move. D.D. Lewis coming hard after him. I mean, D.D. was closing in a hurry, and Pesavento had to pick him up in the corner of his eye as he threw, Gary. That's the difference this Texas defense also. You're going to see a guard pull this way, play action the other way, and as Pesavento comes out, the man-to-man -man coverage is so much better that D.D. Lewis can take a run at Pesavento as he lets that go. Now, NFL... They might have heard from Gene Washington on that one with a little message in your a little little note in your paycheck. But in college ball, it seems like they let him have one more step on his quarterbacks. Third down and five with the Colorado cheerleaders. Urging on the offense for a first down, and uh, they've got a hurry. Pesavento had to use a timeout, and the reason why is that the clock was running down. So we have talked about uh, the NFL and Monday night. <laughs> Brett Favre and the uh, Green Bay Packers will face the Jacksonville Jaguars. We'd love to pull an upset. Packers Jaguars Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN. Just when you expected the Packers to take charge of the NFC Central, they fell back after yeah, beating the Bears. Well, yeah, that league is that's too hard. I'm glad I'm done with that league. <laughs> Let's check in with Jack and Rue. Jack. Well, Brent, before the start of the season, Gary Barnett said anything short of being here with his team would have been a disappointment for the season. To drive home the point, he commissioned a special ceramic replica of Texas Stadium. They have carried it to every single Big 12 game. Every Big 12 victory, a new sticker goes back on the outer case. The only sticker that's missing, Brent, is the Texas Longhorn sticker. Yeah, Jack, it was 41-7 when they went down to Austin, so that sticker is still in the Gary Barnett's briefcase. He hopes to use it here tonight. And remember, that was the first start. Again, let's reiterate this thing. Bobby Pesavento, his first start. Craig Oaks is the starting quarterback for this Colorado football team. He had a little post-concussion syndrome, then he sprained an ankle. Pesavento has gotten better and better, and this team has gotten better and better with him. Personnel adjustment. Hollowell late to the field. Now Colorado gets set. And Jammer is just shutting down on McCoy, as you would expect. D.D. Lewis all over Pesavento. Takes him down at the 14-yard line. And they are not handling the veteran linebacker. No, that, that's a busted assignment right there. D.D. came in clean. No one really reacts to this one at all. He lines up with the inside right here. There he is right there. No one really handles him. He just comes off the corner. That's a busted assignment. Two people inside. No one rubs out for the linebacker, and that's an easy one. So Pesavento only two of seven. Sacked for 15. D.D. Lewis a big hug when he goes over to the Longhorn sideline. And Mariscal back to punt again. Now remember, Colorado lost contact down in Austin. That's something they do not want to do in the first half here. Basher on the move, 45. Slips to the 46-yard line, probably. So we've been talking about it, and next Sunday, John and Terry will be in Times Square Stadium to reveal which teams will battle for the national championship, plus all of the other bowl championship series matchups. The Tostitos BCS Selection Show next Sunday live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. I have to needle my colleague just a little bit. Just a little bit, which Mr. One? Daniels. Which, which well, one? I've done uh, so many. No, no, no. I thought you were a little premature in eliminating Mr. Eric Crouch from the Heisman race. I, you know what after I, Thanksgiving. You know what I, I did, though? Take it back, you know what I did, though? I saved my balance. <laughs> <laughs> you can say anything on TV I, until I, you write right. it down. You're That's right, what you got to do. Here's the delay play with Benson. He shakes that first tackle. Oh. Gary, I have not seen a freshman no. running back with the ability to shed the first would-be tackler the way said does. Well, you know, uh, Jack said that said wants to be Ricky Williams. 
He reminds me of Emmett Smith, the way he shakes through people. Nothing really, not, he doesn't have outstanding speed, he doesn't have tremendous size, but his eyes and his ability to fall forward reminds me of Emmett Smith. Well, that's a real good comparison, because you look down, you think he stopped, and all he does is pick up a few more yards. And uh, that was certainly what Emmett Smith did, he's still doing it. And uh, here's Subbert now, 30, 25, and out of bounds at the 22-yard line. And so, Cedric Benson now is starting to pile up the yards. Give some of the credit to this one, though, with that Texas offensive line. An ISO with a pull right here. Watch his guard come around and just blow this hole right up this time. When you get that guard to fold around one side, I think it's Dockery and the fullback. Tristle didn't even have anybody to block on the play. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. And that puts him over 1,000 yards, and he is the first freshman to run for 1,000 yards at Texas. And somebody talked to Roy Williams. They told him to block when you're not catching the ball. So it's first and 10 for Sims and an impressive horn team in the early going. Well, intercepted, picked off. 35, 50. Down to the 25, still going inside the 15. Aaron Killian, the linebacker from Kingwood, Texas, makes a huge play for the Buffaloes. And it was a, just a bad throw. He threw it to the right guy. He threw it about three yards behind the tight end. I think Sims thought Scape was going to hook. Scape ran an out route. Drops back. It's going to the left side. Easy throw. Sims throws it with authority here, but look how far behind it is for both Scape, and that's just a gimme. Huge, huge play to get Colorado back in the game. One guy's going out. Lybeck, that's just a poor throw or bad communication, one of the two. And a 73-yard return, and the Buffaloes are business. Now, remember when they went to Austin, they turned it over, Colorado did four times, and did not force a turnover. Now, out, and Brown is tripped up by his own player, I believe. Getting back to the line of scrimmage, it's going to be second down and 10. So we go back to what Gary Danielson put up on the graphic, and turnovers were going to be so huge yeah. here tonight. And here's our first one of the evening. Watch the penetration from that Texas defense. Page number 72, tries to come around, but he gets blown up inside. Actually, the running back runs right over the pulling guard. That's the penetration you have to have to stop this powerful line. Now let's see on second down. And made the most of it. He was under pressure to the nine-yard line. D.D. Lewis is there again. He's off to a great start tonight. He really is. Ex running back. Lines up at middle linebacker. This Texas team changed when they had 63 rung on them a year ago by Oklahoma. They decided to move safeties to linebackers and linebackers to defensive end, and they said speed must be number one. They got speed. There's your third down and eight now. Here's Brown for the end zone. Dives. And he's got it. Touchdown, Colorado. The turnover leads to the Brown touchdown. And it was a tough run for Gary Barnett's tailback, who transferred from Northwestern. Flores on for the extra point that would tie Colorado with Texas here at the Big 12 championship. Good, and we are deadlocked at seven because of the turnover. Looking for his tight end, instead it was Aaron Killian who stepped in and then took it back 73 yards. And that is his first interception of the season. Then the young man who scored six times against Nebraska gets his first against Texas. Timeout. I'm going to uh, take you back to a Big 12 championship game between Kansas State and Texas A&M, in which a lot of fans of Kansas State were watching on the monitor. And UCLA was picked off by Miami that afternoon, and all K-State had to do to get the championship game was win. Instead, in double overtime, they lost in dramatic fashion to the Aggies. And now Texas, knowing that they have a good shot to get to the Rose Bowl. And suddenly they're deadlocked at seven because of the turnover. 
And tomorrow, only on ABC's This Week, Attorney General John Ashcroft faces tough questions about civil liberties and uh, catching Osama bin Laden. An exclusive Sunday morning interview on This Week tomorrow here on ABC. And no tougher than the one I had you gave me in the open there, though. Gee, come on, John, you can handle that. You know? Let's check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Rick, when Chris Sims threw that interception, he walked to both skates and he said, my bad. I was the mistake there. Then he went to every single member of the offense and said the exact same thing. Ended his statement with, but we'll get it back. Johnson and Thomas, the wideouts. Johnson coming in motion. Beyond Cedric Benson, and he is stuffed by the defensive line. Joey Johnson, that hot linebacker, did a nice job of replacing Sight this year. Now remember, there was an interception, a poor decision by the quarterback because he had both skate wide open on that play. But the matchups are still there. The matchups that started the game for Texas are still available to them. I think the weakest part of this Colorado defense is the corners. And Strickland, remember, number four is playing with that injured shoulder after drawing loose two fumbles against Nebraska. Since he's going to throw over Vincent's head, and he was well defended on the play by Matt McChesney, the defensive end who came out with him, and he didn't give him, and so, uh, because there was no daylight, Sims threw it out of bounds. So a lot of defensive pressure on uh, Vince here tonight. Yeah, Vince Okru right there. He was not happy. You win, you beat Nebraska, and you don't even give anybody on your defense player of the game. Imagine that. Brett Robin now checks in for blitz control. An obvious passing situation. He replaces Benson, and Colorado walked up and then back down. And they're only going to rush three. And they throw it underneath to him, and nothing doing. And Texas is forced to punt. Oh, Replay by Lewis. Yeah, remember on the touchdown by Colorado, it was third and long, and they ran the ball with two tight ends. Now you see third and long for Texas, and you'll see these Colorado, they're just going to back out of there and force that ball to be thrown inside here to the running back. That's where the only place it's going to be able to go, and that's where he delivered the ball. you got to punt. Take your medicine. Bradford to punt it for the Horns. Colorado well awaits it. And he was down. Yeah, they're going to get a five-yard circle, uh, I think, Halo. So tack on the old Halo rule here. And uh, when you take a look at the yardage. Take one more look at that. You get a, two yards, and uh, he was one and a half yards. Total yards in this game. Texas with 137, and Colorado with 43. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Well, Brent, who's going to face Tennessee in the SEC championship game, Auburn or LSU? Rohan Davey here, out of the clutches of a defender, tosses this one 17 yards to Josh Reed. LSU now leading Auburn 14-7. Also, BYU yet to lose this season, but down to Mississippi State, a 2-17, 14-7. Brent. Yes, yeah, Starkville can be kind of a tough place. And uh, Brigham Young stepping up a little bit, taking on a SEC team, but they've got a great offense, and we'll see what happens. See the fullback out here. He's coming in in motion to run the ball. That gets him on the linebacker. He opens the hole, and here they come again with Brown. You can't stop him. He's inside the 30-yard line. That looked like Nebraska out there. It's the same formation that gave Nebraska problems. Drum lines up wide. You get a one-back call by the defense. All of a sudden, he comes into motion. Look at that blocking, though. Those guys are doing the job up front. Gerard, Rogers, Wayne Lucier, Hage, Bates. They're still blocking that front four, and that power game is working again. Averaging 8.3 yards a carry. And he'll take a breather now. And Bobby Purify steps into the rotation. And there is Drum, the fullback from Alaska again, out as a receiver. They got him again, but no game. Right at the line of scrimmage, Basher all over him. This is a very well-coached defensive unit. Uh, Reese does a magnificent job of coordinating this defense. He has good coaches under him 
And uh, so they're well aware of what they have to do here tonight against this Colorado offense. In fact, both of these staffs are quality coaching staffs, and that's why they came on at the end of the year. That's why Gary Barnett was able to keep Colorado together after that painful loss to Fresno State and the other one to Texas. Now Brown is back as his running back. his way inside the 25 yard line it'll be third down well the only person that has an emergency is Colorado offense has been Graham the tight end he's right here at the end man on the line of scrimmage so far he's doing his job blocking he's got Redding this time now there's a tight end you got a guy that can catch the ball and block like that you're going to get yards he will emerge passing as this game goes on so ABC Sports presentation, college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, it's interesting, you know, Colorado likes to recruit down in Texas, and uh, the young man Killian with that big turnover, 73 yards down Houston place, so I'm sure it's a big thrill to come in here against Texas. Well, that's the key to rivalry games, when you can recruit the same type of players, but this one's for the championship. Doesn't matter where you're living in this one. And we are tied at the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. And on third down, they don't get it to start the second quarter. So it will set up a field goal opportunity as Everett Rawls makes a stop. And here now are our Dr. Pepper first quarter stats and points off turnovers, Gary. Yeah, you're right. That's the one right there. That big turnover by Sims when he had it marching down that field. They were able to run the ball. Just a bad decision. There's so many decisions being made in the passing game. You know what I like this kicker, Jeremy Flores? He was a boxer. Well, I mean, this is a tough hombre. Is he here. got a glass chin or is he not? He ain't, he ain't tough <laughs> He's enough. going for the lead. That's a 39 yarder. <laughs> so Jeremy Flores puts Colorado ahead for the first time here tonight. It's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship between Colorado and Texas. Are you getting the feel for Colorado leading for the first time here tonight in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship. Ball is on the tee. Okay, kick. That bone. Kick it away for the Buffaloes. Kick to right. Coming out to the goal line. And Knight's got an alley. 35 40 out of bounds. Far side. And Brome, the kicker, pushes him out. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Cadillac, the fusion of design and technology, and Beechwood Aged Budweiser with that crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. I think Texas, Brent, has to get the ball to their playmaker, and one of their playmakers is at number four, Williams. He's almost impossible to guard one-on-one. -on -one. He's out there to the flank, and uh, he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage again. They spread right the field there. now with four wideouts. Three go to the left to Sims, and they want to get Williams locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Sims are looking that direction. He's going to come back the other side underneath the Benson. Benson at midfield for a first down. So there was Sims, who was given enough time by his offensive line of Doan, Dockery, Anderson, Kirk Hughes, and Williams to actually find his number three <laughs> receiver. Now, Phil Sims is supposed to be in attendance here tonight watching his son at this championship game. What was interesting about Chris is he told us down and off, he has never, ever been to Texas Stadium. I said, come on, didn't Pops bring you down here to, to watch? No, he said, I want to watch those games on TV. And he said, then when Dad retired, I became a big fan of the Cowboys. Troy Aikman was my hero. And then guess who was sidling up to him yesterday, folks? Jerry Jones. But somebody pointed out to Jones that he's still got another year left. Hands off. So now Sims backs up and fires left hand intercepted. That's the second one of the game. Picked off. This one by Joey Johnson. So Chris Sims, who had thrown only two interceptions since the loss to Oklahoma, has thrown two here in the first half tonight. Risk reward. Texas trying to run this, throw this ball over. Here's the linebacker right here. That's who's going to drop back. Your responsibility as a quarterback is to throw the ball between the linebackers. Tries to go over the top of them. 
bad, bad decision by Chris. The first one might have been a bad throw. That one was a bad decision. And, and Brett, you know, I don't think Bill Parcells lets children travel with the Giants back in the day. <laughs> Just a little quirky hat, you know. I don't think it. <laughs> first down and 10. Purifies a running back for Colorado. Straight back, deep drop. Pulling it away is McCoy from Jammer that time. And uh, there's your duel. Score one for McCoy against Quentin. Well, there's the accuracy that Pesaveno has really been balancing this offense with. They want to throw the ball. You got outside, one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. I think this time it was an against, yes, it was against Jammer, but it was a kind of a trick coverage that time. They were playing in and out on him and got the ball. But look at that throw by Pesaveno. Sean Watson said they would not avoid Jammer, that they would go at him from time to time, and they did just that. First down and 10, and the whistle. And, and Daniel Graham flinched that time. Tight end for Colorado. It's going to be a five-yard illegal pursuit. Right snap. Ball start, offense. Five yards. We play first So we've got a moment. Uh, it's time for the Aflac trivia question. And this week's question is in the first Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game, 1966 in St. Louis. Who scored three touchdowns for Texas against Nebraska? I'm going to give you one hint, folks. It was not, not Ricky Williams. And he played in that game. So we've had, that was another day with Ricky Texas. Williams. Not okay. Ricky Williams. First down now and 15 after the penalty. Three wide outs. And they run the middle with Purify, who spins back to the original line of scrimmage. So Texas scored first here in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, and Colorado has responded with 10 points. The key play after the Texas touchdown. Vincent, this is the one that turned the game around. Killian, 73 yards, and Brown battles his way to the end zone. Flores adds the field goal. That's how we got to a 10-7 game. You know, when I talk about a game and what's good inside it, Brad, I do not like to always point out turnovers, but in this game, it was hard to avoid the turnovers is going to decide. Here is Drum. Back in motion and Purify has the hole blown up and he's in a race for the end zone. 20. They've got the angle. He's out of bounds at the four-yard line. Ahmad Brooks, the free safety, saves a touchdown. But how about these Buffaloes? See, a lot of people thought last week that it was a bad coaching job by Nebraska. But you got to give the credit to this offensive line. You know Carl Reese has studied these films all week. Look at these holes. Safeties, linebackers, you get caught up in that rush. Those cutback lanes are huge. Purify says, man, this is fun. Give the game ball to my offensive line. What a fullback that youngster is, too. He leads the way. Brown is hit in the backfield and no touchdown this time around as Derek Johnson, number 11, slashes in on the tackle for the Longhorns. And you're talking about Brandon Drum. He is a tremendous fullback. He catches the ball, he blocks, he doesn't get to carry it a lot, but he's the type of fullback that those West Coast offensive teams in the NFL just love to have. Nowadays, if you can throw the ball to the fullback, you can run the ball. Rodgers, Gerard, Lucille, Page, Bates, they get ready to lead the way. It's that offensive line again doing the job. Rodgers and Gerard are over to the right. They're running that direction. Brown battling for the end zone, moves toward the goal line. No signal as he was down right close to it. And this will be third down. And you got to ask yourself, why not the same play again? Watch the tight end. Graham is going to kick out one way and then come back and block the other way. Kicks out on Redding, then slams down. That's a tight end. That's running his assignment exactly what right. What a block by Drum. Yeah, he Reddy just ran right over him. And he leveled number four. And that's what you do. You chip with the tight end and you run right over with the fullback. Great game plan. Follow number 33, folks. He's going to take you to the action. Here he comes, leading the way, and a stand-up touchdown for Colorado. And I want to tell you, the most valuable player might be number 33, Brandon Drum, the junior from Anchorage, Alaska. Nathan Basher will agree with you on this one. The strong safety. Now remember, Texas plays with four corner-type players. They don't really have big-time safeties. Nathan Basher comes up, number three, and take on.
on number 33. 33 wins. He wins big time. Here's Jones for the extra point. Pulled it to the left. No good. He hooked it. So Brown battles in again and watch the lead, the block that clears the way. And then on the cutback by Purify, the 50-yard run, that set up the touchdown. And on now the watch the number three. 33 <laughs> just lowered his shoulder and crushed him. And Brown steps into the end zone, and Colorado's in business. Timeout. Not bad to have your backup quarterback be the all-time Big 12 leader in passing offense and Major Applewhite with that helmet on. Talked to him yesterday. He's going to go to the Hula Bowl after the season. Then if the NFL takes a look at it, fine. If not, he's going to come back as a graduate assistant and take off on a coaching career. And, uh, if Chris Sims doesn't shake out of this, who knows? Maybe we'll see Major here tonight. To the 26-yard line, and now let's go back to the tight end. And we already talked about how Vasher gets blocked, but here's Graham again. Watch that, and also watch D.D. Lewis, number 10, come in and overrun the play. When you overrun, this linebacker's got to be in here, not that wide outside. Overrunning the play from the middle linebacker, that's a walk-in. And here's the rushing comparison of Benson against, we call him the herd from Colorado. And you can see that Benson, he scored once, but the herd's got two now. Mr. Brown has stepped yeah. into that end zone a couple of times. And now we'll see what Sims and Benson can do, trailing 16-7. Benson on the slant to the 29-yard line. He's ganged up on, and Walrus credited with the tackle. We check in with Jack. Well, Gary, you were talking about the fact that no defensive game balls were handed out after the game. The reason is this man, Vince Oker, the defensive coordinator, said what I wanted to do is have a method to my madness. He gathered the defense on Monday, and I mean chewed them out, got up in their grill. He said, I did it not because of the way they played, but I wanted them to forget about the game they just played. To come to Texas here and be so mad at me, they proved me to be wrong. Second down, Johnson in motion, and they blitz the corner, and they run it. They slash inside of it. Colorado gambled and blitzed the corner for Vince that time, and Texas made him pay with the first down run as the blitz is picked up, and they slash inside it. Still a good game plan for Vince Oku. You got to blitz because you must put pressure on Chris Sims and force him into some bad throws. You got to live with a few of these run gashes when you do that. When you blitz, you take away your angles to pick up those runs. That time, Texas blocked it well. First down at the 38-yard line. Johnson to the right, Williams to the left. The base 4-3 look. Sims pulls out underneath. And they pick up a couple of yards on that pass. And uh, the tight end Scaife was the receiver that time. And earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Now in that first Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game, who scored three touchdowns for Texas against Nebraska? The answer? Here it is. James Brown is going to hand off to him, ladies and gentlemen, to Priest Holmes, now the star with the Chiefs. Nine carries for 120 yards and three TDs. Ricky in that game, he was the decoy. Eight carries for only seven yards. And the analyst that day was Dick Vermeil. And guess who picked up Priest Holmes as soon as he could when he became available in the NFL at Kansas City. And he's having a fine year. Benson out to the 46-yard line. Michael Lewis makes a stop third and short. Was that 98 G they ran against Nebraska right there on that play? It's like the same play. I think so. <laughs> Well, you see, Texas, they're not going to give up on the running game. Prince is struggling a little bit. One bad decision, one bad throw. Benson is too valuable to just turn the game over to just the passing game. It looks like Greg Davis is going to say we have to be balanced. They load up. Two tight ends and a fullback. This is a Get long two. an H back. Benson's the runner here on third down. Good-looking freshman running back he is. 
we did the Texas Oklahoma game and watched him practice all week before that game and Mac Brown said he's not quite ready yet in his blitz pickups well after that game not being able to score some points I think he looked the fence and it said you're gonna have to run the ball whether you're ready to pick up the blitz or not we need running yards and you're the guy that can give it to us Williams the big right tackle blew that hole open all big 12 he's an all-american candidate no one's quiet, Michael Lewis, the safety for Colorado. Uh, first down, Sims. Firing sideline, jump ball, Strickland knocks it away. He's on Williams, they go mano mano. Yeah, poorly underthrown that time again by, by Chris Sims. Williams is going to go deep. He has his body in front of Strickland on this play. Look at that guy. This ball is slightly underthrown. You see them both shut down, and Strickland stays in perfect position to at least distract Williams enough where that ball could be caught. Sloan Thomas off to the right side. Shanahan into the left. Second down and ten. This is Shanahan emotion. They'll throw out to the fullback, Trissel. This is going to be third and long as we check in with John Saunders. John. Brent LSU looking to open up a little breathing room against Auburn and gets set to face Tennessee. Dominic Davis, seven-yard touchdown run makes it a 21-7 lead for the Tigers. Again, the winner of this one will face Tennessee in the SEC championship game, and BYU is still down to Mississippi State, 21-14. Brent, back to you. All right, John, Auburn a little beat up in that game. Nick Saban, of course, the head coach at LSU, a tough defensive mind, and it'll be interesting to see what happens there as that one unfolds. Here it's third down on long. Colorado shows blitz. And then they jump. They jump offside. So it'll be five yards closer to a first down for the Horns. And, uh, we had an opportunity to talk to Mac Brown about the pressure that's on his quarterback, Chris Sims. What Chris has done is he's beaten the odds and he's worked very hard, and now he's accomplishing the things that people anticipated and expected of him in that first year. Uh, 16 touchdowns and two interceptions uh, since Oklahoma. Well, now it's four interceptions <laughs> since Oklahoma, Coach. Third down, and Sims is up under center with a split back look. They bring Johnson, and there's a penalty flying on this one. I think they're going to get Colorado again offsides. Two third-down penalties for a first down. Third and long, you get back-to-back -back offsides against the Colorado defense. And this one will give them a first Offside. down. Defense, five yards, first down. Well, tomorrow, Hall of Fame running back Gail Sayers is one of football's true legends, and his relationship with teammate Brian Piccolo was legendary. Brian's song tomorrow at 7, 6 Central here on ABC. A couple of fellows that I covered as a newspaper man in the 60s back in Chicago, the legendary Gail Sayers, and of course, there was not a nicer young man around than the uh, late Brian Piccolo. And if you haven't seen the original, make sure you see the remake of Brian's song. And I thought the original was plenty good too. So it's first down and 10 now for Sims who hands it off to Benson. And he was stopped in that hole by Michael Lewis. You said you hadn't heard much from him, and there he was. Yeah, and the reason Michael Lewis isn't up there making the plays like he did a week ago against Nebraska is he has to stay back as a safety and be aware of those wide receivers. He has to help the corners. He has to disguise for against Chris Sims, just picking them apart. But look, even though that play right there looked like it was just a mash, they gained four or five yards almost. That's a successful first down run. Tony Jeffrey, a pretty good thrower, is in at wide receiver for Texas. They'll slot him. They run out of this formation with Benson to the 32-yard line. So this will be third down. Coming up, and a reminder that coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John and Terry will have scores and highlights from college football today. And uh, I dare say that Terry's papa probably had himself a very good evening tonight. Yeah, but, he, but he poured himself a tall one, didn't he? <laughs> well, no. That'd be a tall, that'd be a tall Dr. Pepper oh, for well, Bobby. Okay. Okay. All right. I just said tall one. <laughs> okay. 
Where's B.J. Johnson, number 82? Such a great receiver. He's flanked wide this time, way out to the top of your screen. And uh, he's a real wide, and he's the guy that hasn't got in this game plan. Here's third down for Sims and Orange. On a release, knocked away. Incomplete, and again, that secondary. Strickland coming up big. It was the B.J. Johnson. I think Greg Davis said the same thing. Let's establish another weapon. He's going to come across on a square and route it, but again, it appeared the ball was there late. Let's see if I was wrong or not. Ball needs to be thrown. Actually, that's a pretty good throw right there. Nice job by Strickland. He just beat him to the spot. Fourth down. And they're going to attempt the long 50-yarder. Trahan, the special teams star, is the holder for Mangum. Good! A 50-yarder for Mangum. It's not Gramatica's reaction, but it's still just like that. <laughs> Time out as Texas puts a three on the board. Hollowell set to return this kickoff as Colorado's lead has been cut to six points, 16-10 here. And Danny Smith with the ball on the tee for the Longhorns. to the 30-yard line, and now it's time for our Pacific Life game summary. And this game has revolved around two turnovers, both interceptions. Here's Killian, 73 yards, setting up a touchdown run by Brown. Then it was Johnson with the leaping pick, number two. And again, it was Brown into the end zone. And now he scored eight touchdowns rushing in less than six quarters, which is a magnificent effort. In that yardage battle, Texas had it every which way until that first turnover. Now they have 183 yards to Colorado's 143. Colorado with that ball again. Here comes Pesavento. Can't get it off, and he'll be sacked at the 27-yard line. The first sack by the Horns, and that's Marcus Tubbs, the defensive tackle. And Tubbs got the sack because Pesavento was trying to throw the ball to Graham, his tight end. Graham came off the line of scrimmage, got knocked down or fell down, whatever you want to say. And that's what he was trying to trying to get that tight end off and going. I think he runs into his own guy. He does. Pesavento says, uh-oh, I don't have anywhere to go with the ball, and he kind of panics. Second and 14. It's long for Pesavento, who's 4 of 9 for 32 yards, has not thrown an interception. They'll stick with the running game doing for purify it is third and long and uh, you know uh, we're short-handed here tonight folks that's right we haven't got one of our fine tape gentlemen down there associate director Mitch Green he's home with with his wife Vicky 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 gave birth to a baby girl Stephanie Green seven pounds 14 ounces we're told that mom Vicky and a baby are doing very well I certainly hope Mitch is holding up we miss you Mitch but uh, hey you got to play injured right so you got to do the game injured like this today you see, Colorado flops their linemen. Graham lines up most of the time with Gerard and Rodgers, but look at the balance. They're running the ball both ways. They're having success to him or four away from Graham. The clock running down, so Colorado uses a timeout rather than take the penalty here. Let's check in with Jack. Brent, as you look at Texas, they have been in this position before. It was a 12th ranked Texas that came in the Big 12 championship in 1999, trying to sweep then number three Cornhuskers of Nebraska. But Eric Crouch ran for two touchdowns. And they went on to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl where they defeated Tennessee. And Texas did not win the Big 12. Yeah, exactly, Jack. They've been in that rematch situation before. Really interesting after 
they play that game against a and all of the quotes, and remember that was the day before the Oklahoma loss to Oklahoma State was, I think we're in a BCS game. All of a sudden Oklahoma loses, now you're into the championship game, but your BCS game is dependent on beating a good Colorado team. You know, if you go back to that first game in Austin, Texas had a lead, but then late they were backed up at their five-yard line. Colorado thought they were going to get the ball back, and then the shovel pass. And Benson exploded for 40 yards, and from there, Texas exploded with Benson scoring, and they took charge of that game. It was the key play. And we're closing down here in the first half as Pesamino, third down, going to go long, intercepted by Basher. What a beautiful pick. He took it right out of the receiver's hands. That's the flexibility having four safety type, four corner types on the field at the same time. Basher says, I don't like taking on that fullback, but I can handle a wide receiver. You can't outflank us just by bringing in extra receivers and look at Basher just play this ball and a beautiful interception. And Tillman Holloway is in at left guard for the Longhorns. Benson the running back. They've gone to a fullback look with Trissel. They did that a couple series ago for Greg Davis. Two wideouts and Sims is going to put it up on first down. Can't find an open man. He fumbles the ball. Loose. Colorado's got it. At the 21-yard line, Sims turns it over for the third time here today. Matt McChesky jumps on it. Oh, boy. Turning the ball over. First down play. Chris Sims, who has protected the ball so well since the Oklahoma game. Now, no one to throw to. Just waves the ball around, and look at that. Anytime you wave that thing, you have the potential of dropping it. And boy, oh boy, around here, Irving, Texas, Austin, Texas, it doesn't matter when you got a Big 12 former starting quarterback behind you, Major White, a, a Major Applewhite, you wonder what's going to happen. That fumble was caused by a young man down Houston way, DeAndre Fluellen. Now on first down and 10, critical drive. Pesavino tries to find. Safety down is Graham in zone. Touchdown, Colorado. So in that first game, it was the Horns with a late touchdown in the first half. And here in the Big 12 Championship, it's Colorado. I think Colorado will go for two, but they finally found Daniel Graham. I think Tyrone Jones and Dee, Dee Lewis had coverage. But they both went for Pesavento once Pesavento broke the pocket and they let the tight end go. They'll go for two. All three of the touchdowns for Colorado came after turnovers. The two interceptions and now the fumble by Sims. And here's the two point play. Pesavento. Dropped, incomplete. He had Matt Brunson. But it's 22 to 10 right now. Gary Barnett's underdog Colorado Buffaloes with a lead. Let's take a look at the touchdown first. You're going to see Graham right here go across. Now watch the coverage on him. It's very solid until Pesavento leaves the pocket. You got D.D. Lewis running with them. You got the Jones running with them. But once Pesavetto runs, two guys leave him. Actually, he tripped over the corner. Wow, you never know what it's going to be. Jones, I believe, trips over his own man, and that allowed it. There's number 30 run, Tyrone Jones. He's got him all the way. Now watch him trip over Johnson, the freshman who goes for Pesavetto. What a gift. Now the two-point conversion failing. And the wide receiver breaking to the side of the end zone just couldn't hang on. Well, Miami was happy for a drop ball. This one was a little tougher catch than the Virginia Tech 
player had, but this was obviously a good throw from Pesaveno and should have been caught and should have been a 24 to 10 lead. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Last time Colorado had four, now Texas has three in the first half. Flores with the ball on the team. A short boost and the fair catch is called for at the 37 yard line. Well, coming up at halftime, Don Swadley here, a business owner from Columbus, Kansas, going to have his opportunity to kick that field goal from his choice of the 10 yard line for 50 G's, the 20 yard line for 250,000, or from the 30 yard line, folks, for $1 million. It'd be Dr. Pepper, pick your kick contest. We'll be finding out which yard line he selects. You gotta go from the 20. You gotta go from the 20. 250,000, give it a shot. He's been working for a couple of weeks. <laughs> he says, not quite leg tired yet. First down and 10. Uphill for Chris Sims and the Longhorns. Got time and he dumps it off underneath. To the 45 yard line, picking up seven yards and Michael Lewis making the stop. Turnovers are the story of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Killian's interception, Johnson's interception, Flewellen forcing the fumble, McChesney recovering it, and Colorado scores all three times following those turnovers. Three-man rush now against Sims, and here comes Benson running against that three-man line for a first down to the 45. So Texas in a hurry up to try and cut that score before the intermission. Brent, you mentioned that shovel pass and that last drive that Texas had against Colorado last time they played them. Remember, in the first half of that game, Colorado outgained te Texas 244 yards to 226, and 95 came on that last drive of the half. So Colorado knew coming into this game they could move the ball. Now they've got some turnovers. They show bump on Williams. Sims doesn't look in his direction. Comes back and there is his third interception thrown to the middle to Medford Moore who picks it off. And Moore breaks free. Touchdown, Colorado. Touchdown. Boy, oh boy. I've been there. A 64-yard return by Moore. Just like his father, just like anybody else who's ever played this position, you got to fight through days like this. Sometimes you have a backup quarterback that the coach puts in, you don't get to survive it. Let's see what happens now, whether Chris Sims is going to fight his way through this thing. That is Williams shaking up. And Benson also shaking up on the play. And that backup quarterback, Applewhite, with the helmet on, certainly no indication. But they have three interceptions here thrown by Sims and one fumble, the difference in the game. And now Flores for the extra point. Colorado shocking the world again. And Flores adds the extra point. That was Moore's first interception of the game. And what a tough run for about the last 20 yards. Moore is over the middle of the field. Run this thing a little bit. Chris Simmons is going to drop back on this play. Let her go. Gets a blitz. He thinks he has man-to-man -man coverage. And all of a sudden, he tries to throw the ball in the middle. A robber defense. Wow. Just standing there and reading his eyes. That's called the robber. You blitz inside, and you keep a safety right in the middle to rob those crossing routes. Chris misread it. He thought he had man-to-man -man coverage. There he is right there. Watch him just sneak into the inside and read Chris's eyes. Moves over, moves over, bang. There's the interception. A great job of camouflaging their defense. Yep. That was the game plan coming in here. Show man, switch to zone. Show soft zone, and jump into a bump and run coverage. Well, you and they showed that. press. I mentioned before the play even began that they showed press against Roy Williams. 
And Sims saw that over there, and that was one indication that they were going to be in man. He never even looked back in that direction. Now here's your high football. Fielded at the goal line by Victor Ike. And Ike is down at the 20-yard line, and this Longhorn crowd is growing a little restless right now. This is what happened. The the Blues. They want Apple yeah. White. This is what happens when you're playing in front of your home crowd works as a disadvantage as a quarterback when you're struggling in a football game. Twenty nine. And Apple White's in, in that Apple huddle. White He's is in, in there that telling him to fire up. Quit listening to the booze. Chris Sims is the quarterback at least for now. So now, first down and ten. Complete. So about a five-yard gain. And you know, we were talking about the coverages, and uh, Michael Lewis talked about how they would disguise them against Sims. We want to give him different looks because he has a tendency to check at the line. And if we can get him to check into the wrong pass route or something, we can get an easy pick. So we, that's, that's our whole game plan, getting him to come up, read the defense, then move late on him. And hopefully we get him to check, and he throws their offense off. And so far it has done a good job as uh, Sims was Brent, injured and, and Major hand. Applewhite yeah. will be in the game. He's warming up right now as Sims hurt his hand. And the Major is ready to come on. I don't know if he hit a helmet or slammed it on the turf after he let it go, but Tyler Brayton, number 99, hits him. He looks like he hit his arm against the guy coming in. It's, he grabs his left fingers right as he lets the ball go. You could separate or pop a knuckle real easy on one of those. So now what Fence has to remind the Colorado defense about is don't let down against Applewhite. This fellow holds the Big 12 records. And it'll be second down and three, and here's the major. Couple backup quarterbacks in this game. You got Oaks, the former starter for Colorado, and you got Major Applewhite here for Texas. Three, 29 to 10, Applewhite, and a whistle before the snap. Yep, Texas flinched. Prior to snap. Ball start offense. Well, Monday night, Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers face the Jacksonville Jaguars, who would love to pull an upset. Packers, Jaguars, Monday night football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. And, you know, it's interesting. As we see Brett Favre, and you think about his cadence out there, and then you think about major replacing Sims, and it has to be a little bit different for the linemen. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they were that blitz or him trying to get ready, but it is a different tempo. Second down. Major Applewhite has lost a lot of mobility, hurting his knees back in earlier in his career here. Chris Sims, tough first half. You know you don't want to go out with an injury after you've thrown three picks like that. You want to finish this game. There's no way you want to come out. You've thrown three, you've fumbled. You have to finish this game. Can't do it, though. You blow your hand out. Third down and nine for Applewhite and the Longhorns. Colorado could get this ball back one more time. Five wide receivers as they spread the field. They're coming after him? No, it puts the They back out of it. With a three-man rush and Major will go deep. He's got Jackson in the foot race for the end zone. Touchdown, Texas! 79 yards, Applewhite to Johnson. How about that? turn himself into a legend if he wins this one. <laughs> he might take her up on that offer. <laughs> so on third and nine, Major Applewhite puts a charge into the Longhorns. 
79 yards, Mango wins the point. And the Horn crowd is alive. Their favorite has come on. Major Applewhite was looking right. He wanted to throw the ball to his right the whole time. He's looking this way, but B.J. Johnson goes right down the seam and stays there. I think that's B.J. Coming right there. Actually, they cross. B.J., look how open he is. Major turns back and says, oh, my. But he doesn't miss him. When you got a guy that wide open and you don't overthrow or underthrow him, that's a guy who stays ready to play. That's what Major Applewhite has done. What a throw. B.J. Johnson says, I like this one. And we got a new football game. Oh, well, look at Major. It's a football game. Get ready. A little trash talk. Yep, that get Colorado ready. Center. I'm Come playing. On, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's check in with Jack. I wrote Jack. Well, Brent, while uh, Major Applewhite came in and engineered that drive, it was without Cedric Benson. Benson has been sidelined and is being evaluated, will continue to be evaluated at halftime. He suffered a neck stinger, and the athletic trainers are still working on him. Nah, Jack, and here's Hollywell for Colorado. To the middle. And tripped up at the 31-yard line is where Pesimento and the Buffaloes will put it in play. We've had a little bit of everything, haven't we, in this yeah, half? Yeah, we sure have. Cedric Benson got hurt on the interception, I believe, the last one. He came over to make the tackle, and he runs into his own guy. And just uh, that's a dangerous play, running helmet into a big player like that. And Benson, you can see, sprung it and still doesn't feel well. Brent, i got to give Major so much credit. He knew Chris Sims was going in there for that series. He went up to those players that get ready to play. He didn't know he was coming in, and all of a sudden, he's out on the field. First down and 10. Brown to the 37. Well, you've got to give Major yep. credit for the way he's handled this entire situation. I can't imagine a young man being benched in the situation that he faced and just being quiet, carrying on about it. He told me, yeah, it hurt. He said, especially against Oklahoma, it hurt. But he said, I understand my role, and, uh, and I'm just happy to be here. And uh, Major Applewhite has been a class, class backup quarterback after losing his job. I remember we did a game up in Lincoln, and Major Applewhite and the Horns ended their long home winning streak. And uh, what a job he did for Texas that day. Second down now. Oh, oh my, did they stand him up in the hole that time. What a hit by Ahmad Brooks, the free safety. <laughs> Uh, the tempo has changed in this game. Brooks, a high school quarterback who was quoted as saying, if I knew they were going to move me to safety, I would have never came to Texas. All of a sudden says, you know what? If I'm going to play safety. I might as well play safety. And he does it that. Holy cow. And that's a very dangerous play that time by Chris Brown ducking his head like that. You got to keep your eyes up when you're running the ball. First down. Inside of a minute, Jerry Barnett's Buffaloes. And this is a different game unfolding than the first time they met down in Austin. Now Pesavino, another young man who handled the situation. Not quite similar, but uh, but he was benched when uh, Craig Oaks came in. And yep. He wondered if he'd ever play again, but he just kept his mouth shut, tended to his business, and like all backup quarterbacks in the NFL, someday, somewhere, sometime, you get a chance. Yeah, and, and the key to that is be ready when you get your chance. First down and ten. The handoff again. And the middle opens for Brown, who battles for 11 yards and a first down. Basher makes the stop. Man, who is this guy? Great eyes, great size, picks his way through there, delivers a blow every time he gets tackled. What a Terry. player. This guy's fourth string. Looks, don't even say it. I don't even want to talk about this what? Northwestern you know, thing, do you? No, no, oh, okay. no. That reminds me of another Brown fellow by the name of James, the Whoa, way he's man. running, I'll tell you. Man. They can't get him out. I had to think that uh, Jimmy Brown, you know, we were talking about great running backs and Gale Sayers. He was electric and he could do so many things with those moves. But uh, I always thought that 
Jimmy Brown was maybe the toughest running well, back. Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, he, he probably was, and he punished everybody that tackled him when he did. Yeah. Let's check in with Jack Aruda, Jack. Brent, do you remember in 1996 when the Texas Longhorns were being led by John Makovic? They went to St. Louis for the first Big 12 game. And on this fourth down play, a gutsy call, the Cornhuskers found themselves on the losing end. One play later, the Longhorns went on to score from the 11-yard line a 37-27 upset over Nebraska. Yeah, roll left with James Brown to Derek Lewis. I'll never, ever forget it. And uh, Makovic, when he saw that Brown was going to throw it on the sideline, said, oh, no. Yeah. He expected Brown to run for the first down. And, uh, and James, who's now in the Arena League and a businessman in Nashville, Tennessee, he said, listen, Lewis was so wide open, I just had to give him the football. First down and 10 now with Cortland Johnson, the running back. Colorado has no timeouts. They lead it by 12, 29 to 17. Final 30 seconds. Russell And Russell down. Oh, at the 49-yard uh, line, so that's a loss of about three yards on the play with Jermaine Anderson, the senior from Texas City, in on that stop. If Colorado could hurry, they might be able to just down the ball and throw a long one, a Hail Mary, into the end zone, but it looks like they're just going to let the clock run out. So Barnett and the Buffaloes go into the locker room, leading 29-17. to 17 over Texas and we send you now to New York here's John and Terry John all right guys Chris Sims led his team onto the field he just led his team off the field the question is will he lead them out for the second half no John it's got to go with major Applewhite Chris Sims not only had turnovers but they were all foolish turnovers turnovers he should not make this is major Applewhite's chance he's got to lead them in the second half three interceptions and a fumble for Sims but Texas still very much in the game when we come back the Capital One halftime show it's all coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations Halftime show presented by Capital One, who asks, What's in your wallet? From Times Square Stadium in New York, John Saunders and Terry Bowden. As the city starts to get festive for the Christmas season, Colorado with a 29 to 17 lead over Texas. Texas probably feeling themselves pretty fortunate right now after the four turnovers. Second half still to come. The number one team in the nation, the Miami Hurricanes, with one hurdle left to get them to the Rose Bowl. That would be at Virginia Tech, and this hurdle would be high. Ken Dorsey to Jeremy Shockey. Miami grabs the lead. But late in the game, Miami punter Freddie Capshaw has it blocked by Eric Green. Beamer ball again. Brandon Manning takes it in for the touchdown. And Virginia Tech is within two points. Two-point conversion. Grant Noll to Ernest Wolford. Looks like he makes the catch, but clearly on the replay, he dropped it. The official saw it all the way. They did get the ball back. Frank Beamer hits the deck. They got the ball back, had another chance. Couldn't get it done then, but just the same, that two-point conversion will cost them. Ken Dorsey, not all that impressive, but Miami is in the Rose Bowl. Well, Ken Dorsey led his team to victory, and Miami, still undefeated. Championship teams, Rose Bowl teams, learn how to win the close games. They know how to win their close games. Clinton Portis, 34 carries for 124 yards and a touchdown. Tennessee against Florida. Rex Grossman, 21 yards to Jabbar Gaffney as Florida grabs the lead at 17-14. But Travis Stevens, you want to see a great run? Take a look at this one, Terry. Well, he's so short. He's about 5'8", and you can't find a place to tackle him. You hit his shoulder pads, and that's what he did. He was the difference in this game. Coach Phil Former loved to run the football, gets criticized for being conservative, but that was the difference. Rex Grossman, though, has a chance to lead him back. Late touchdown, three yards to Carlos Perez, but they need the two-point conversion. Grossman scrambles around. Looks like there's a hold back there in the corner of the end zone. It is not called, and Tennessee has the win. Casey Clawson, 17 of 25, 168 yards. But more important, they're in the SEC championship game. They sure are, and if they could continue to win, they may have a chance now to play in the Rose Bowl. It's certainly wide open with Texas down right now. Auburn facing LSU. Rohan Davey, 17 yards to Josh Reed. You see the score is 7-7 at this point. 
It's at a 14-7 lead. Right now, LSU is up 24-7. Winner of this game gets Tennessee. Well, everybody's got to remember, LSU lost three games, but they were the preseason pick to win the West. Love that because of the great arm of Rohan Davey and Josh Reed, his great receiver. Jason Campbell does have a touchdown pass for Auburn, their only score right now. BYU and Mississippi State, the folks out West screaming, BYU should be in the hunt, but take a look at this score, and it tells you why they are not. Their strength of schedule just is not very good and down 24-21 to a three-win Mississippi State squad. Well, that's why they don't get respect in the polls. They don't play well against teams that, that aren't real good. All right, let's take a look at the BCS berths and who is exactly in as their conference champions. As we know, the Big East, it's Miami, and we do know they'll be headed to the Rose Bowl as the number one team in the BCS standings. In the Big Ten, it's Illinois at 10-1. Remember, Michigan losing to Ohio State cost them. Oregon wins against Oregon State today. They're 10-1. Maryland, a great season. The winner of the game you're watching, it'll be Tennessee against LSU or Auburn. I tell you, it's a great finish, too. And we don't know, with this Texas game being as it is, it's, it's interesting how Major Applewhite, how he performs in this second half, may decide who's going to be in the Rose Bowl. All right, you have already said that they should put Major Applewhite and leave him in the mm -hmm. game. So, assuming that's what happens, what does Texas have to do to win? What does Colorado have to do to keep the lead? Well, Texas needs to get Cedric Benson back in that game. He was banged up, held out. He needs to get back in that game. Let's give him the football and throw deep to those wide receivers. Colorado needs to run the football. All right, there's still more to come here. This is the Capital One Halftime Show. Again, the Big 12 championship game. Colorado with the lead, 29 to 17. Back with more in a moment. Back here at the Capital One Halftime Show. Don't forget, Sunday, December the 9th at 3.30 Eastern Time, the Tostitos BCS Selection Show. We'll let you know who's going to face Miami in the Rose Bowl. We'll be in the Sugar, the Fiesta, and the Orange as well. Oregon already knowing you're going to one of those games, but bragging rights today against Oregon State in the Civil War. Jonathan Smith, 25 yards to Josh Hawkins as Oregon State is trying to mount a comeback. Smith then gets the two-point conversion to Sean Kittner. But Terry, a late interception cost him the game. Well, he outdueled Heisman hopeful Joey Harrington the entire game until the last minute of the game. Last chance for Oregon State throws this interception. Harrington 11 of 22 for just 104 yards. Not that impressive to the Heisman voters. Stanford and San Jose State. Randy Fasani 27 yards to Luke Powell. And for the second time in 50 years, Stanford gets a nine-win season. It seems everybody on the West Coast was playing in the mud, but I'll tell you, Ty Willingham, a great job as the head coach at Stanford. Pull off a couple of upsets over the way as well. Stick around. When we come back, we'll join Brent Musburger for the Dr. Pepper Million Dollar Pick Your Kick contest. It's coming up. Our score here at the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship is Colorado 29, Texas 17. And in a few moments, Don Swadley, who owns businesses in Columbus, Kansas, is going to have the opportunity to kick a field goal from his choice of the 10-yard line for $50,000, the 20-yard line for $250,000, or from the 30-yard line for $1 million as Dr. Pepper and the Big 12 present the Dr. Pepper Million Dollar Pick Your Kick Contest. On the field with Don Swadley, who won a promotion sponsored by Dr. Pepper, is ABC Sports' Jack Aru. Jack? All right, Don, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Where are you going to attempt the kick from? I'm going from the 20-yard line for the 250000 Quarter of a million dollar kick coming up. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Well, this he's no been working for uh, for a couple of weeks, uh, Gary. See, this is a no-brainer here. If you kick it from the 10, you can kick it from the 20. You don't want to get 50 grand. You want the whole 250. I like his style here. Allowed to put it on a tee. Oh, he's got to go with the soft view. Is he is he a soccer style? Is he straight on? I think he's on? a straight on. I is think somebody told on? me. And, uh, oh, yeah. That, oh yeah. Get the rehearsal down. Taking his time, uh, which is good. Don't rush out there. Now he's going to get his steps. You only get on national television so many times. That's right. Come on, Don. For $250,000. Well done. 
Tremendous. Swanley. Tremendous concentration. He blocked everything out and just did his routine. He's done it over and over again. He just concentrated on one thing. Straight through. Doesn't worry about getting blocked. 250. <laughs> Boy, that didn't waver at all, did it? Well done. Let's go back to Jack. Well, Don, $250,000 later, and to present the check is the president of Dr. Pepper. Don, congratulations. On behalf of the Dr. Pepper Company and all Dr. Pepper bottlers, congratulations on winning this $250,000 and being a Dr. Pepper drinker and participating in your Pick Your Cake program. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. So tell me about this. You kind of visualized it. Yeah, I've had uh, 21 days to learn how to kick. I've never played Yeah, but football. I'm talking about right out here. You walked it off. You I were a little it more off, serious had a routine. About it. Yeah, just kept with my routine, tried to be consistent. Jack killed up. You've got to pay out a quarter of a million dollars now. I'm looking forward to it. Brent? All right, Jack, an ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, no surprise, but Major Applewhite will take over the Texas offense here in the second half, Gary. Now, Brent, two things. Playing quarterback can keep you humble. It's and number two, don't come off the field unless they drag you off. <laughs> There's always somebody else to take your job and go out and throw a football. And this fellow's pretty good. Yeah, he holds Major records Applewhite. in Texas really? and in the Big 12. And we'll see how it turns out. You know, Colorado's playing awfully well today. Yeah, they stuck to their game plan. They have the ability to run the ball, and they're doing it. Last time they played Texas, they threw the ball 19 times in the first half. This time they've run the ball, they've had a commitment to run the ball, and they've been overpowering. Yeah, and Texas gets the ball to start the uh, second half, so they'll have the first possession for Major. Playing by 12 points here. And they'll bring it out on the 20 yard line as we check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, first let's update you on a couple of injuries. Mike Williams is very questionable, the tackle for Texas, as to whether he will return. Cedric Benson, on the other hand, they're going to put a neck wrap on him. The stinger still bothers him. He also is questionable for the, re the resumption of play, but Mac Brown told me he wants to get him back out there. Meanwhile, Mac Brown told his team 12 points is not enough to be considered a defeat. He says we play with one heart, we can still win this game. One heart, and that's the name of a book that Mac Brown has written along with Bill Little. Out of the University of Texas, and that'll be released here in a couple of months. So first and ten now for Major Applewhite and the Longhorns. Down the middle, he goes again to Johnson. Drop this time. Well, the stats were dominated by Colorado running the ball 125 yards in the first half, and obviously the turnovers. Two huge things. We talked about it. My game breakers were control the line of scrimmage. Colorado's doing that and will protect the football. Texas is not doing that. That's why Colorado has the lead. Brett Robin, the running back behind Major. On second down and 10. Draw play to Robin, and they eat it up. And it's going to be third and long for the Horns. And that play was made by Joey Johnson. And now it's time for our Morgan Stanley storyline. Turnovers, Mr. Daniels. Really is. Look at this. Since the OU loss, only four turnovers in six games tonight. Just tonight, 26 points, and all season, 29 points in the first pass by Oklahoma. Only 26 in a game all season against this great Texas defense. So here's third and 10 on the Horns' first possession in the second half, down 12. Major to Williams. And it was off to the right side. I think Williams lost the ball. Brent, this is a little different stadium. The lights come over the middle with that roof, and when he looked up, he could have easily stopped and caught that ball. I don't think he saw it. Ball was thrown to the outside as he turns. I think he looks up and says, I don't see it. Look at him looking back at the quarterback. And then at the last second, he looks up and just does not find the ball. And it was off to his right shoulder. Yep. And he was turned the wrong way. Well, Hollowell now set to return this punt. Bradford gets it off. 
He's got daylight at the middle. And Holloway to the 40-yard line, and Pesimeno and the Buffaloes with excellent field position to start the second half. Well, Hollowell and Colorado got a break that time because the gunner coming down on the punt team was simply mucked that time by the blocker. And look at the, what you'll see, I don't know, you see Hollowell catch the ball, but there, look at the mugging job done right there in the back. Spins him through and throws him down to the ground. Brown is the running back. He'll open the half. Cormier off to the left of Pesimeno. And Brown with a huge hole to the 34-yard line. We talked about what the two teams like to do in the game. Colorado has stuck to the game plan. They want to run the ball with power. They have done it. 21 rush attempts in the first half. Texas, they changed a bit. That long pass kind of distorted the thing by towards the end, that 79-yarder by Major Appleway. But Texas has not been able to run the ball at all. So here's Pesimeno. He did not pick up Hollowell in time, and down he goes. It was an interesting play. They replaced McCoy with Hollowell, and they knew that Jammer was going to press. And Hollowell, with that great quickness, was open, and Pesimeno didn't see him. Also, I think Pesavento, his number two receiver, was the tight end coming across the frame right across here. Watch how he runs into the umpire as he comes across. One guy's going deep, one guy's going across, and he could not find either one of them. He had Hollowell for a touchdown. Yes, he did. Now McCoy checks back in. Sideline McCoy against Jammer. Here's that matchup, and McCoy goes in the air and pulls it down. A circus catch against arguably the best corner in football, and he out jumps him with that size. It's 33 yards, and the Buffaloes are in business. What a great play for Derek McCoy. And you can't cover any better than that. You said it. Get a great matchup out there. Pesavento's going to go top of the screen. That's the matchup. Pesavento says, I got one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to lay it up and coming inside, just jump over the player and make the catch. Derek McCoy was part of that first class that Gary Barnett signed. Nobody's got Hollowell out here to the outside. That was 30 16 and Hollowell was uncovered on the left side, but they couldn't do anything about it. And uh, now it is second down. So the uh, Buffalo's using a formation and a personnel substitution package for Coach Barnett. That's a and they've of, caught Texas off balance yeah, here. That's a little bit of a mistake by the quarterback. You don't want to blame him too much, but one of your jobs is to check your formation and make sure your wide receivers are covered by someone. That time, no one had Hollowell at all. He could have just raised up the pitcher to him for an easy touchdown. Second down and eight. And let's see if Drum comes in motion. He stays outside. Run Brown straight to the end zone. Woo. Touchdown, Colorado. That's his third touchdown of this game. He's the young man who put a half dozen up on Nebraska. And he ran it to the Andre, Andre Garad and Victor Rogers side. He ran it to the big guys. All Big 12, a future number one draft pick, two number one draft picks, 98 G. There it is. We talked about it in the opening. D.D. Lewis came underneath it. 98 G scores again. The point. He adds it. And Texas knows now they're in deep trouble. They're forced to punt. Colorado comes down and scores on its first possession of the second half. They lead it 36 17. Mac Brown's Longhorn scored first of this game. But Gary Barnett's defense got their first of three interceptions against Chris Sims, and the game has not been the same since. That pick by Killian. They have dominated it since that time. Three yards deep, it'll come out on the 20-yard line. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. BU, nothing's better. Dr. Pepper, Chrysler, drive equals love. Ali, starring Will Smith, coming this Christmas to theaters everywhere. Your Morgan Stanley financial advisor who will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. Major Applewhite, 
who replaced Sims after he injured a hand and has started the second half has come on to the game now. And Mike Williams is not in the game. They've moved Dockery over to his right tackle spot. Benson and Williams lost on the same play in the interception. And Victor Ike comes off the sideline. He's the running back for the Longhorns right now. Who need three touchdowns and Dockery number 76 in that line. So Dockery moves from a starting left guard out to the right tackle spot for the all big 12 Mike Williams. There's Williams right there. He got remember that play when we lost Benson and Williams on the same play. So they lose him. All Big 12 tackle and the freshman offensive player of the year. That was a very, very costly turnover. They drop the right to the middle again. He's got Scaife, the tight end, to the 46 yard line, and it's a first down, Texas. Michael Lewis, that time, the safety, stayed up in the robber position, and Bo Scaife ran right by him to get down the middle of the field, and Applewhite accurately read, the, read it and threw it at the same time. The linebacker on the tight end hasn't been working, Brad. Not for anybody yet in the last the couple truth? games. Three wide receivers. Williams is off to the right for Apple White, who has favored the middle of the field with his throws since coming off the bench. And again, he goes back to the middle, this time underneath. And he's got a dancing first down from Victor Ike. Well, remember that play, the interception by Sims. Guys coming over to make the tackle. Woo. Benson runs in to Williams. Running back into a 345-pound brick wall, and both of them are out of the football game. Johnson's off to his left. Williams to the right. Trestle's the fullback. Play fake in the rounds, Williams. Williams has got daylight. 40, 35, 30. Williams inside the 20 and pushed out of bounds. At the 13-yard line, a beautiful run by Roy Williams. Watch how smart Major Applewhite is after he hands this ball off. He knows he has to get his body in the way to clean Williams. Applewhite's going to make the fake to Victor Reich. Now, when he hands it off, watch him pick the guy off. Oh, Strickland is running with Williams the whole way. And he gets picked off, and that's really what cleans the play going for Williams almost to put it in the end zone. Now can the major clean up in the red zone from the 13-yard line. Victor Ike is his running back. Johnson slotted to the right. Now they bring Jeffrey in motion through the formation. And Jeffrey, who can throw off of that play, and uh, he is stymied just inside the 15-yard line. That was McChesney, and remember, he recovered the Sims fumble on that critical play earlier. It was McChesney who came up with the fumble recovery, and now Johnson and Williams come back into the formation. That was Jeffrey who was actually slotted and ran out of that. Yeah, I do think, though, that we'll see that formation and motion and handoff again. They're setting that play up for Jeffrey to throw the ball later. Second down. Texas needs touchdowns, not field goals. Victor Ike, daylight in the middle. Battles to the five, and it'll be third down and a couple. Well, next Sunday, John and Terry will be in Times Square to reveal which teams will battle for the national championship, plus all the other bowl championship series matchups. The Tostitos BCS Selection Show next Sunday live, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. And uh, John and Terry may have a lot of things to sort out. Florida, a loser today. Miami, of course, figures to be headed on to the Rose Bowl, the only unbeaten team. Texas, number three, was hoping to move up. They're battling for their life right now. Oregon came through against Oregon State. Tennessee. And by Colorado. They're as good as anybody right now. And Ike is short of that first down. Yeah, I don't know if they can climb high enough with the points, Brett, but I would say probably no one wants to play Colorado right now, including Texas. Tough matchup for anyone. When you're able to run the ball like they have, 
and just get power running plays. You have a tough time beating a team like that. And Mack has to go for the touchdown here. It's fourth down and one. He trails at 36 17. Inside of eight minutes, they can get a first down without scoring. Remember that. They load up the backfield. And Major tried to draw him offside. Yeah, there was motion and motion back. Now you got to kick the field goal. Yep. Prior to the snap, ball start off this. Five yards. Still early, third down. quarter, 16 point game if you kick this thing. It's not the worst thing that's ever happened in the world. That's why Max clapping and saying good drive. Just can't miss it. Well, and also, <laughs> Mac has to be concerned about his defense at that's this right. point. That's right. That's the shock of this game. Now, you know, you could say that maybe Colorado caught Nebraska off balance, but they sure haven't caught Carl Reese off balance. They blocked him. And Mangum nails the field goal. So Texas makes it a 36-20, uh, 16-point game and timeout. I always did like that major. I don't know why they were messing around with limo. Been there, done that. Kid <laughs> hadn't earned it yet. <laughs> Old people down there in the corner. <laughs> Chewing on the old cut down there. Seen it all. Pickoff is drilled. Honorello fielded and they step into the end zone. His momentum took him there. Now oh, they're going to no. mark it on the one yard line. There's your mental mistake. Boy, there's a guy trying to make a smart play, too. And this is a tough one. If he runs it out, we say, what are you doing that for? Catches the ball. One foot right there, he's got it. Seven and then foot. his momentum. Yep. Well, that's pretty close. His right, his second foot was came down on the line. I can't really blame the guy, but look at the, the ball position now and the field position on the one yard line. So now the crowd alive. They know the horn defense can attack. Pesavino and the Buffaloes must be so careful down here. Careful, they explode out of that. And you can't stop Chris Brown with drum right there with him. Look at number 33, his bodyguard. Was that some run or what? Let's go to John Saunders. Brett, for the Burger King update, BYU looking to finish the season unbeaten. Have to play Hawaii as well against Mississippi State. Kevin Fant to Justin Jenkins, 28 yards. Mississippi State leading unbeaten BYU, 31 21, Brent. All right, John, and uh, we just had a remarkable play by the Buffaloes as Purify comes in and takes a loss. But, Gary, I cannot overemphasize how good that fullback is, and Brown is a runner. Well, that, that time, Drum was looking for somebody to block. He ran right through there, and I thought he was going to escort him the whole way down the field. Line of scrimmage, number 33. Look at the linebackers for Texas are right at the line of scrimmage this time. Drum says, all right, I'll follow you. Just in case something bad happens, Basher says, I've seen this before. I don't like 33 and I don't like 22. I like covering guys. Remarkable. Second down and long now. And that fullback coming in motion. He can get on the back real quick, which he does. And there's the holding call. And Lucier, the center that time, couldn't handle the penetration inside, and he's going to get called for it. That's how you stop him. The only way to stop him is to penetrate. Yards, spot. Let's check in with Jack. Brent, if you take a look at Bobby Pesavento, he is now wearing a rubber knee brace on his knee. It seems that he sprained his MCL in the last play of the first quarter. Craig Oaks was scheduled to come out and start the second of the second half. But Pesavento talked Gary Barnett out of it at the last minute. On that last play, after that sizable game, Pesavento turned to the sizable Texas crowd here and waved him on saying, bring it on, baby, bring it on. Well, here's second down and 23. And they run 
run purified to the 20 yard line. Pick up a few more yards before they face this third down here. You know, another just real big part of this football game with this herd for Buffalo running the ball, purified Brown, Portland Johnson, they don't turn the ball over. They don't drop it, they don't fumble it. They take care of the ball, they protect the ball. I think that uh, still an emerging story is that one by Jack with that knee. It's okay if you can run the ball and have a knee like that, but if you have to throw it, we may still yet see, Craig O. Look for Graham. He's only got one pass, but they elect to keep it on the ground with Brown. Conservative call, and they're going to punt it away. Jones makes a stop on Brown, and here's our Chrysler drive summary. And take a look at Colorado's last seven possessions. Before the half, they scored a touchdown, and they struck right after the half. I tell you. If it wasn't for the clock running out on them, they, they, they'd just be scoring it well. They made one mistake, Pesavento's interception, or they've been just going through them, and they've been, obviously, those turnovers have helped them with the short field. So from behind Mariscal, who will punt it away. Basher looks for a return. Slips the tackle, crosses midfield. Basher down the sideline and pushed out of bounds inside I believe he may have been out at the 38 yard line yes he was he stepped out at the 38 yard line and that's where Texas will put it in play working with a short field timeout full moon over the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship here in Texas Stadium Irving Texas with Colorado an eight point underdog stunning Texas 36 to 20. But that's more respect than they received at home last week when they were a double digit underdog after losing to Nebraska no by help. field goal the previous year. No help on the outside out there. They receive it to the top of the screen. Goes down and uh, whistled prior to the snap. So it is amazing how football games right, a snap. Ball start offense. pivot Five on yards. turnovers. And now it is time for our Pacific Life game summary. This game has not been the same. First it was Killian for 73 yards. Then it was Johnson. Then it was the fumble. And finally, the third interception. And Colorado sees the opportunity to score touchdowns off of the four Texas turnovers, and they lead it 36 to 20. Puck fake. Now Apple White side back out Williams, and Williams is out of bounds. A beautiful look off to the right, and then come back to his big play man, and he's just short of the 20 yard line. Give me accuracy from a quarterback. Another Give penalty me flag accuracy. Here. I think it was penalty uh, pass interference uh, by Colorado on that play. Holding. Yeah, and holding. They were trying holding Roy Williams. He fakes to the bottom of the screen, but he's going to go to the top of the screen. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and boy, that big guy right there, Roy Williams, even though Snead tried to hold him, but watch how accurate the throw is. Can't throw it any better than that. You put it up top, Snead doesn't even turn around, and he gets it. Now, here is Roy Williams, the big play guy, and his brother Lloyd led the NCAA in reception down to Texas Tech. That was back at... 92 and he's out of a very very good high school program in Odessa Texas Friday Night Lights first down and 10. And a major backs out gets protection fires toward the end zone diving no incomplete they say he trapped it. No major check off to that play he knew he had one on one coverage they ran the old smash route. The wide receiver to the bottom just stays right here and just stays down. This guy goes to the corner. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage. Major throws it. I don't know if we're going to see if the ball hits the ground or not. Looks like it did. Looks like it dropped. We got another look at it. And good work, guys. Good camera work. The ball hit the ground. We're going to reverse that call as no touchdown. Oh, he calls it. Right. Second down and 10, and uh, B.J. Johnson, the intended target that time, he caught the long one from Apple White. Four wideouts for Texas. There's the shovel pass, and wow! 
You can burn me once, but you won't burn me twice. And Aaron Killian, who had that huge first interception, makes the play on the shovel pass for the Buffalo. Yeah, the shovel pass got a, a, a face full of dirt on that one. Shoveled it to him, and he turned around, and he just uh, got gagged with uh, Killian on that play. Nice call, safe call, but did not work. Needing 12 yards on third down. Texas needs a strike here. A three-man rush. Now they blitz. Fumble. Texas recovers it. And it is fourth down. There was that disguised defensive look with three down linemen. And Colorado blitzes off of it with Robbie Robinson, the safety, jarring the ball loose. Three-man look. Stay there. Come in. You can rush a lot of guys. Coming from the outside over here is going to be Robbie Robinson, number nine. Major wants to throw the ball. You see, middle of the field, you see a free safety there watching Major's eyes. It wasn't an all-out blitz. They had somebody there in the middle to help. Mangum. This a 49-yarder. No good. Uh-oh. Penalty, though. And Texas. I don't know which way it's going to go, though. Somewhat dejectedly walking off the field yep. like it's uh, going yep. against them. Yep. So this will be no good, and Colorado takes over. Well, the pass to B.J. Johnson could have been a touchdown. It was there. When you're behind by the 12 points, you got to come up with a catch like that. It was a good throw from no Major. Good. We had off, offsetting penalties, personal fouls on each team. First down at this point, all right. Well, Sunday night, Terrell Owens, Jeff Garcia, and the San Francisco 49ers look to keep pace with the Rams as they host the Buffalo Bills. Sunday night football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. And for more information, log on to ESPN.com. Colorado 36, Texas 20. The winner with an automatic BCS bull bid. Portland Johnson in as the running back. The herd, part of the herd, three different guys. Here he is. He thunders through there to the 40 yard line, and it is second down to two. You know, you cannot say enough about the job that Gary Barnett has done. And remember back at the Big 12 media day when he visited this stadium and he had with him Gerard and Lewis. And he had them look around the stadium and he said, we will be back. And uh, everyone laughed. And of course, after losing to Fresno State, they laughed louder. But then I couldn't believe that I was handed a clip by somebody suggesting that Barnett is out trying to get another uh, job someplace. In the Stuck right at the uh, line of scrimmage, close to the first down. D.D. Lewis makes the stop, but uh, let's go back to Barnett for a moment. Uh, with all that gossip about Notre Dame, we went through this once before when he was at Northwestern, and uh, he didn't want any part of that down the road in South Bend, and uh, he has always wanted to come back. He obviously was a candidate for Texas, lost that job to Mac Brown. But he seems very happy when we talk to him in Colorado, and I couldn't believe that uh, someone might suggest that he was lobbying for a job. Now on first down and ten. Pesimento on the road. Goes high and out of bounds. And uh, let's listen to uh, Gary as he talks about uh, what the Buffaloes overcame this year. That's the mark of this team. It's just overcome a lot, and it's had the spirit to do it. And uh, I haven't been around teams that overcome quite the way that this team has. And so in that regard, it's, it, it, it's, it holds the highest spot in that particular area. Just an outstanding coach. Again, I, I said this during the Nebraska game, and I, I mean it. I, I didn't think anybody could take Northwestern to a Rose Bowl, and, and he did exactly that. And this team at Colorado is playing so well right now. They go back to Chris Brown, and he is short at the first down uh, near midfield. But you know, Gary, it looks like Colorado did as good a job scouting Texas as they did scouting Nebraska. You know, Bobby Pesavento, Brent, said last week we ran the same three plays over and over again. They may be running four this game, but it looks like the same offense to me. 
The mismatch at tight end for Daniel Graham, even though he's only caught one pass, has forced Texas to put a linebacker and a safety on him. That has opened up running holes. Give a lot of credit to Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, who seems to know what he's doing calling the running hole. Need three yards here on third down. Pressure no rolls, 40 had drum, and he overthrew the fullback that time. See, that's that's where you wonder if that knee isn't quite as good as a Craig Oaks might be in that situation. That little bit of mobility to drop the ball off the fullback is huge in this type of a game. You know, Texas believed, and I agree with them, that Barnett's very comfortable with Pesavento. He does not make the big mistake out on the field. And yes, he no missed doubt. the open yeah. man, yeah, no but he doubt. threw it out of bounds. Yes, he, did he did not throw it to a white jersey that time. He has not made the mistakes that Chris Sims, a much more Ballyhoo quarterback, made in this game and put Texas into a hole in the first half. So it's a fourth down. They're running down toward a minute in the third quarter. It's a high booming punt, and Basher is going to hope it goes into the end zone, which it will. And come out of 20. Let's let's go back to the BCS standings for a moment, and let's. Uh, Let's talk about uh, what has transpired. Miami appears headed for the Rose Bowl, but Florida knocked off by Tennessee today. Uh -oh. And now Texas losing. They could go down. So there's Nebraska, city number four. Oregon, five, and Tennessee with that big win. And you got to wonder how high. Now, Colorado with 18 uh, would seem to be because they've lost twice. You got to wonder if seem to be out of it. Uh, you got to wonder how Nebraska could possibly get there getting 62 points scored on them. If they get there, I don't know. They got to re retool the computers, if you ask me. First down and 10. And a play fake and throw back to Ike. He's wide open off the fake. Beautiful execution, and Ike battles his way. In the Colorado Territory at the 49-yard line. Nice play by Major and I. I always tell young quarterbacks who are complaining about not getting playing time, be ready. Prove the coaches wrong when you get your chance. They say you're not good enough to play. Don't make them right. When you walk out on the field, don't let them be right. You be right. Be ready to play. Know your game plan and look at Major Appoy. Ready to play comes out with a winning performance. That's a 31-yard game. But Texas must finish some of these drives if they're going to stay in this in the fourth quarter. Dropping it off underneath again to that open man for 10 more yards and a first down. Nice patience. Nice patience. Ike has been a big factor like a third down back. He really has. So funny how you keep yourself ready to play, how things kind of turn back to you. Victor Ike, Cedric Benson was the new superstar. Ike was the reason that things weren't going well, and all of a sudden, it falls back in his lap. Was he fooling around, having a lot of fun? No, studying his plays, ready to play. Just inside the 40-yard line. And major change in left. He's got 10 seconds left on the play clock. This time, a run inside the 35-yard line. Tufts again. And a uh, flag is thrown on the far side. Side. And let's go to Jack Aru, Jack. Gary, you were talking about being ready to play. We'll consider this. Nine days ago, Major Applewhite and his dad had tickets to this game. They were going to be the guests of Dr. Pepper and watch the game from a suite. And then all of a sudden, the Oklahoma State victory came upon them. The major called his dad and said, Dad, I think I'm going to have a better seat. And his dad said, well, son, what should I do with your ticket? <laughs> what a good story. Sell it As like the rest of us. <laughs> ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Well, not impossible. They need two eight-point plays, but Colorado defense playing pretty good right now. They are, and they still have the ability to run the ball, but I like the way Mad Ma Major right now is being patient with the football. He's not trying to force it downfield. That's the best way to come from behind. 
All right, 36 20 is our score. There's our line score. And uh, after we look at some more stats, we're going to bring in a uh, friend of ours, Eric Crouch, the outstanding quarterback of Nebraska, who is watching this game back home. And here it is, first down and five for the major. He'll throw. Thomas tries to get to the first down as uh, lunges forward. And here's our uh, Dr. Pepper. Stats through three quarters, Gary. Well, you can see Texas is gaining all the yards, but they have to. When you turn the ball over, you're going to have to go a longer field. They're doing it. The passing game has been what they hung their hat on. They've lost Mike Williams. They've lost Cedric Benson. Major Applewhite is going to have to win this game with his arm. First down for him. They motion Victor out of the backfield. And he overthrew Roy Williams. And uh, we welcome Eric Crouch, the quarterback of the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And Eric, as you've been watching this game unfold, what are your thoughts about Major Applewhite taking over here as quarterback for Texas? Oh, well, he's been a guy that I've played against before. And so I know his toughness and his ability. Uh, he's doing a great job right now. And uh, I've, I've always kind of been a, a Major Applewhite fan. And, and uh, you know, every chance that he gets the get in there and play that you know he, he steps up to the plate and delivers second down and 10 now for the major he eyes that defense caught down to about six seconds and he's going to call a uh, timeout so we'll take a break and then Gary and I'll come back with Eric Crouch in just a moment Second down and 10 for the Longhorns at the Colorado 26 yard line. The Buffaloes lead it 36 to 20. Gary Danielson with Brent Busberger, Eric Crouch is on the phone with us. We're going to be continuing that interview here as the play moves along. Second down and 10. And Applewhite fires. Williams has got to be sure to the first down. And, uh, you know, Eric, and uh, looking at this Colorado team, they may have been better than anyone imagined, even uh, coming off of that great performance against your team. These fellows have played well here tonight. Oh, they definitely have. You know, the big thing about it, after looking at last week and then looking at this week, uh, you know, they're doing a great job of taking care of the football. And when you do that, uh, your team is going to have great success. You know, Eric, you rushed for 162 yards and two touchdowns. You passed for 198. You couldn't tackle, folks. I was surprised that some people knocked you off that Heisman list, eh? Oh well, you know you you just uh, kind of sit back and watch and, and hear what happens. And right now, that's kind of the position that I'm in right now. And and uh, you know it's been a it's been a fun ride all year long. And I'm glad that I, I really haven't hung my head and, and on anything and, and set goals on a Heisman Trophy. But you know I still plan on uh, on being in, in New York and having a good time and enjoying the uh, end of my career. Hey Eric, uh, Gary here. What is your future plans besides the bowl game? Do you want to play quarterback in the NFL? Is that your goal? Well, uh, you know, right now it, it would be great. You know, I have a, a mindset as a quarterback. I'll definitely probably try that. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, that's what my calling is. And uh, if, if it's not, then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll decide down the road. But, you know, I feel like I have an offensive mind and, and a passion to play quarterback. Hey, Eric, it's a pleasure being with you. And, my friend, you are very much alive in that Heisman race, no matter what anybody says. Luck, Thanks Eric. a lot, Eric. Right, thank you. Kicks the field goal, 36-23, timeout. Thirteen forty-two left now. And the Texas defense needs to make a statement here against Bobby Pesavento in Colorado. Gary Barnett will be looking for a ball control drive. He'll be looking to take some time off the clock. What that field goal did, it means that they don't have to go for two points, but they still need the two touchdowns. Short on the kickoff. Hollowell runs it up. Looking for an opening. And it closes down at the 30-yard line. And the ABC Sports presentation is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Chick-fil-A, home of the famous Chick-fil-A sandwich. And Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Right now, this Texas defense has to force a three and out. They need the ball back. 
Jammer will go with McCoy. Brown, who has scored three touchdowns and rushed for 139 yards, is the running back. They'll go to 22, and Texas knew it was coming. And a big time play by Reddy. Check that. That was Gordon, Maurice Gordon, the defensive tackle who broke through there and made the stop. Number 48, when you pull it, it's 98 G. Wayne Lucier could not get the reach block on Gordon, got in with that penetration, and 98 G becomes OG. We just lost five yards. Second down and 15 now, and the Horns think they can tee off defensively. Both Johnson and D.D. Lewis are in the game. Johnson. No safety, no safety. In that middle gap. They'll run Brown back toward him. And he battles to get back to the original line of scrimmage, and he may have been a little bit short on the stop by Brooks. Well, we talked about what was going to determine this football game. Number one, control the line of scrimmage. You have to get it to that Colorado offensive line. The second game in a row, they've come out, protect the football. Chris Sims did not do it. Three interceptions, and he fumbled, and that kept Colorado in the game, and they ran with it. Portland Johnson, the best receiver of the backs, has checked in. Piece of equipment is fired off to the far side by Colorado. Wayne so Lesseur. Portland Johnson could switch out. Third down and 10 now. And Pesavino will throw the screen pass underneath. And Johnson, for a first down, they send him in, the good receiver. And he makes a first down on the screen play. That piece of equipment when Wayne Lassier's left shoe. He's playing with a sock in this game, and he pulled on the screen play. He tossed it. He couldn't get it on. He's lined up in the middle. Watch him come across. It's going to be a screen play to the left side of the screen. Lassier. He's going with one shoe here. Comes so out, doesn't get a block, but he was out there. And they've got him out here for one play as they put the shoe on the sideline. They'll bring him back. <laughs> First down now. And they run Brown to that middle. And he is wrestled down by Brooks. But a big game. So here at the top of the hour. Brown, who scored six times against the Cornhuskers, has pounded in for three against the Longhorns. That's nine touchdowns in his last two games. 25 carries, 149 yards. He is the leader of the herd. Colorado has run the ball in this football game now 39 times. In the nine wins, Colorado has averaged running it 51 times. When they lose, just 31 times. Need a yard. And whistle before the snap. Right of snap. Ball start offense. Five yards. We play second down. And first and ten this quarter is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. And you can see that line about a yard away. It's all they need here. But now they move it back five more after the penalty. So instead of uh, second and one, it's now going to be second and six. Texas knew the game plan. They knew they'd have to stop the running game. They knew they had to stop the power game. You can see the play selection. Colorado's not doing it. And here's Brown on the left side, and he is stuffed. So it'll be third down and about four coming up as Tubbs led that charge. What a great call by Sean Watts, an offensive coordinator for Colorado on that screen pass. When we were talking about Lucere's shoe, what a big time third down call to pick up that first down. Now he's got another third down call. There's Steve Marshall, the offensive line coach, who's done such a great job with these buff offensive linemen. Johnson checks back in. Remember, he's the running back and the best receiver out of the backfield. Third down. The toss to Portland Johnson and he is stuffed. Colorado forced the punt with 10 minutes to go. Well, they picked up a first down, but they couldn't do it back to back. And now Texas will get the ball with under 10 minutes to go. And now Major App White can't be quite as patient as he was before. He's going to have to be forced to throw the ball downfield. 
And I almost believe they're probably in four down territory. Hard to punt. Now remember against Texas A&M, Roderick Babers blocked a punt, and Tony Jeffrey ran it in for a touchdown early in that game. Yeah, it was only to, for only for the touchdown. And they're gonna throw back out of it. Oh, Intercepted man. touchdown, Texas. Oh my! Babers for the touchdown. What was Colorado thinking about? Robert Hodge dropped back in punt formation, threw back, and man, oh man, I'm talking about a drive, and all of a sudden we have a nightmare scenario for Colorado. This can make it a six-point game. Mangum adds the extra point. Babers. Sometimes you're too smart for your own good. Here's Hodge right here. He's a quarterback, a backup quarterback. Trick formation, he rolls one way, tries to throw back off balance at Babers, who you mentioned blocked the punt. He does better this time. He picks it off for a touchdown. Game on, everybody. Time out. Babers just made a huge play in this Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship. Fired up his teammates on the sideline. Texas has pulled to within six points. Texas Stadium is rocking. Here's Hollowell. He'll try to light a fire the other way. He's looking for daylight. And he's going to be wrestled down at the 21-yard line. Take another look at this. The first thing is, where did the play come from when you're ahead? Why don't you just punt the ball and play defense? Protect the football, punt the football. Gary Barnett got a little too cute, and now his offensive line has got to save it for him. Andre Durant, Victor Rogers, Daniel Graham. They need to run the ball here and bail the coach out. That was a bad one. I mean, just listen to the crowd that he brought back in. Brown is the running back. He's rushed for 152 yards. He'll go again. And that offensive line starts to bail him out. Let's check in with John Saunders. John? Brent, BYU saying, hold on, Miami. It might not be the only unbeaten. They were down to Mississippi State almost the whole game. Brandon Doman here finds Doug Jolly. 26 yards for the touchdown. They have it now tied at 31 apiece. And a very important one is done. LSU gets the win over Auburn, so it's LSU against Tennessee in the SEC Championship. All right, John, and here, Colorado with a first down on that last run when they come back with Brown, who is carrying a load for seven more yards. And a uh, reminder that at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. I am still stunned. I, I'm stunned by that play call. I, I, I can't get over it. I don't know what you thought you could prove. Tried to put a dagger in their hot heart by coming up with a trick play. Boy, this one, he needs those seniors now. He needs Bobby Pesavetta. Daniel Graham needs to catch a ball, but they need to run it and run it and run it. And that was Johnson, the ball carrier, but they're short of the uh, first down, apparently. You can see what Colorado has done. They have not given up on the run. It's been balanced the whole way. The first quarter is the most throws, but they've been consistent quarter by quarter. The biggest gamble of the game was by the coach. Can yeah, we have another category called bad plays? One. <laughs> Third down now, and here's a huge play for the Buffs. They just need a yard. They lead it 36-30, 7.26 to go. Chris Brown is the running back. Drum is the fullback in front of him. Drum in motion to get on the linebacker. He stands there fast. Here comes Brown. He tries to burrow in, and it's close. It is real close. 
as Redding and the rest of the white shirts jumped him right there. I thought he stretched the ball, but I think the mark is behind the first down line. The linesman came in and put the ball where his knee was. I think he's short. Oh, it's right on the line. Look, it's right on that yellow line. Look at that. That's how close it was. He reached that ball out, and it was right there. Huge first down if they pick this up. Oof. I thought it was right there, very close. Now what do you do? You tell the guy who's spotting for the yellow line to get on the good stick. He only missed it by about half a yard. Yeah, but what do you do now on fourth down? You got to punt it. Oh, I think you got to go for it. I'm a firm believer in protecting a lead with your team. Well, if you don't protect it at 12, why protect it at 6? You got a backup quarterback <laughs> and a backup running back. You better make it if you're going to go, and here they go. You got to make it. Fourth down and inches. Pesimento. Trying to go straight ahead. Texas doesn't think he got it, but... Uh, well, I thought he did. Yeah, it looked like he moved far enough ahead there with a little bit of a second effort. Remember against Nebraska when he scored, he was bobbling the ball he was. I off thought the he snap, bobbled. and I thought this time so he did bobbled it So a did bit. I. I thought he did, too. Tall quarterbacks have a tough time on that play. Corey Redding shaking his head no, but I... <laughs> I think he got it by half the football, but it doesn't make any difference. They're going to measure it. Yeah, by a football length. Yeah. Well, that's two first downs. He's turned the ball over to his offensive line, his running backs, and said, and I think he bobbled that ball. He did, but he got up. He clearly got the first down. Another first down, and they do it. Snap. Oh, man, he's chasing it. He's chasing it. Now it's first down for Colorado. They take that in the round and run Brown straight ahead for a couple of yards behind the left tackle. And another reminder the Monday night, Brett Favre of the Green Bay Packers face the Jacksonville Jaguars. We would love to pull an upset. Packers, Jaguars, Monday night football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC. Gotta believe, Brett, that Major Applewhite wants one more chance with a six-point lead in this game. Stand in there, just give me one more chance with that football. Well, I think he's a lock to get one more chance. Well, you just don't know what the score is going to be, exactly. and you don't know where field position is going to be. As Johnson lead. checks into the backfield, they've got four, and they send Hollowell now in motion. Middle. Diving reception, was it off the deflection? He's waving it off. Said it hit the ground. He went to Spanuski that time, the other tight end, and the umpire was right in the line of the throw and ducked just as Quinn was trying to catch that ball. He hit him right in the face mask. See if the umpire doesn't distract him. Pesavento coming across, easy throw, umpire ducks, and yeah, that's lucky that thing wasn't picked off. Daniel Graham, decoy on this one. Does he get his fingers under it? Nope. Hit the ground, hit the ground. Three wide receivers now on third down. They need to reach the 46-yard line. And Pesavento being chased. Drops it underneath again to Cortland. This is Brown, and Brown for the first down across the 45-yard line. Another screen pass on third down. Pesavento's limping. Gamely staying in the ball game. Hurt his knee on that last sack of the first half. Craig Oaks thought he was going to get the start, but Pesavento talked Gary Barnett into staying in the game. Another great first down on third down for Colorado. Craig Oaks with the headset on on the far side. 
Should Pesselman not be able to play, he would be in, of course. Now first down and 10 in Texas territory. And this time they bunch up on the run. Portland Johnson. With time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Texas has two timeouts remaining. Major Applewhite had to take one on a miss, a little mix up when he had the ball on offense. The Texas defense needs to make another play here. Second down and nine. D.D. Lewis moves up into the gap. And they run Brown nowhere. And it'll be third down and long now. And you wonder if Colorado would dare attempt another screen pass, which has been their best <laughs> play in this drive. We're inside of five minutes. No, I don't, I don't think that screen pass is going to work again. They're going to have to throw the ball downfield or punt the ball if they don't make a first down. And Graham, of course, the tight end, has made one catch for 22 yards. That was like on a broken play. They've not been able to get it to him in the main offense. Portland Johnson with his shirt out, back in and running back. Pesavento going to have to throw it away. There's your fourth down now. You would assume a punt. I don't think we'll see another trick play. Well, Major's going to get his wish. Get the game in his hands. Six points. Chance to be a legend in Texas, maybe forever. One of the better punters in the Big 12, Mark Mariscal. He'll try to bury Major inside that 20-yard line. That's what's critical here. Try not to give away field position. Try not to let Basher have a good return. Texas stones him. Got real close. Basher lets it go. And there is a penalty flag as they attack the punter and miss. And Mariscal is being congratulated on the far side as he draws the penalty. It's a first down automatic. Mac Brown rolled the dice. He thought it would be at the worst would be a five yard running into the kicker. He's going to get the major this time. 15 yarder automatic first down. Mariscal gets it. Lay out and hits him clean. That's a good call. That's a good call. Jigger. Jigger comes across. You've got to go across where the ball is going to be punted, not where the punter was. And that's a good call. I think that puts that punter in danger. And Colorado keeps the ball. Wow. Not only do they keep the ball, the field position is now the 26-yard line for Brown and friends. A lot of things now, Brent. It's going to force Texas to use their timeouts, and Colorado could kick a field goal to make it a nine-point game. There's he Giger. came so close, yeah, so did. close to blocking I thought he that punt. I thought he had the ball. He took a bad angle, and I think he just got blocked slightly. First down for best of all, Colorado, and Brown is stopped. Well, tomorrow on Alias, it's the uh, television event that's been building since the premiere. It's truly the episode you can't miss a new Alias. ABC tomorrow, 9, 8 Central. Second down and 11. I haven't seen this much happen on fourth down in a long time. Three fourth down plays on, on, in, in this, this late this fourth quarter here has really made this an unbelievable thing. Texas with two timeouts remaining, and Brown he is stuffed, and this will be third down after the Redding stop. Texas is saving their timeouts. Texas will come after Flores on the field goal attempt, too, if they go for it. Third I would down and 11. I would use my timeouts. It's easy to stop the ball by... Rounding it or getting first downs. I wouldn't give up 25 seconds here. McCoy goes.
goes out to the left, and Jammer goes with him. They're going to bring Brown to the middle of the formation. Just short of the 20-yard line, and it is fourth down. So the Pacific Life game summary, and fourth down so huge. Babers picks Hodge, dashes in for the touchdown. Teeger close to blocking it. But he commits the personal foul, and it's a first down. And now it is fourth down at the 21-yard line with Jeremy Flores trotting onto the field. It'll be about 38-39. That holder is Jason Burianek, his father, the associate athletic director of Colorado, and a penalty flag. I think Colorado moved. Oh, they get it to lay a game? Oh, man. They huddled up near the sideline to try to bleed the clock, and they took too long. Now, in some situations, you should pooch punt out of this and make a direct snap and still try to bury that team inside the 20 yard line. Yeah, Brent, Colorado's got all three timeouts. They could have ran it down to one second and taken a timeout themselves. Big mistake again. Brian Eckel put it down for Floyds. This would be a 43 yard. It's long enough. It's good. Jeremy Flores makes it a nine-point game. It is huge. The Buffaloes in complete control now, sitting on a nine. Timeout. <laughs> Eric Bannemi in the, the herd over there, and uh, Brown did a great job for the Buffaloes in this game. Well, Major didn't get his wish. He didn't get the ball back with six points. But after the roughing the penalty, on the roughing the kicker penalty, two minutes and 13 seconds were burned and three points from 411 to 158. What a penalty at the end of the game. out of bounds at the 45 yard line by Pat Brome and that kickoff man yes yeah, he's, he's a good them. cover man so here is Major Abboy 9 of 15 off the bench for 191 yards one long touchdown and no interceptions he's gonna have to take chances with the ball now get that onside kick team ready got to stay positive here in Texas Call for the onside kick team right now. And you assume that Major Applewhite's going to take him down there and score. Disregard the flag. There was no foul on the play. First down. Well, the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz, the coordinating producer of college football. And the producer tonight, Bob Goodrich. Our director is Larry Cam. Our TD is Monty Poling. The associate producer is Chris Pfeiffer. Associate Director Brian Fay, Director of Production Bob Toms. Our PAs Kurt Thomas and Tim McDermott, the computer statistician Anthony Holman. Technical manager Mark Dowie, and our production manager is Christy Brady. Senior audio Wendell Stevens, and RF audio Mike Cooper. Thanks to one and all. First down and ten. The major trying to pull a rabbit out of his hat. Fires complete for about five yards. Whistle blow. And the whistle had blown. Yeah. So blow. 145 to go. Play is dead. Sloan Thomas is the receiver. Now the clock will start. He did not. And there you see it. It's going. Texas is trying to call another play at the line of scrimmage. Second down for the horns. Lewis with great coverage that time on Shanahan, and it'll be third down. Right now, Colorado has to keep everyone in front of them. You don't want to give up a cheapy big one. Force Texas to go slowly down the field. Take your chances on an onside kick.
Russell dead. Another defense. remarkable day in the uh, history of the BCS with Florida number two falling at home to Tennessee and favored Texas here in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship losing by nine points with 127 to go and you wonder what the polls and the computers and all the numbers will come up with. They come after a major. He rolls hard to the left as he saw it, but he's not going to get it off. And he goes down at the 44-yard line. Take a timeout. Justin Bannon, and there's Good the call. timeout. So here is the BCS. I want to take you back down through the top ten because uh, tonight, you know, Nebraska wonders, are we still alive? How high will Tennessee jump? How high will Oregon jump? Because both of them came up with wins today. And look at how close it is, especially between Oregon and Nebraska. And Tennessee, not that far back, they will pick up strength of schedule from Florida by going into the swamp. A quality win for them. So Tennessee could jump up there and Oregon and Tennessee remember still has one game left probably a double edged sword if they lose it they'd fall out of it but if they win they're going to pick up some brownie points and uh, move on up well, I don't know how the programs work I can barely turn on my laptop sometimes but if Colorado beats Texas I don't see how Nebraska can go to the championship after getting beat by that something's wrong with the polls if that happens Second down. Now for the major. And they come after him again. Middle, and it is caught on a reach back by Johnson. Clock stops for a first down with 114. And the major might finish this one off. He's got a chance. Vince Oak Rips, Volku has Blitz coming with six people the last two plays. Major's got rid of the ball. Here they come again with six. And he hits Williams. Boy, Williams has been able to shake free from Strickland. Gonna have to take a time he might have gone to the end zone. Yes, you're right. He did. Having to throw hot every time to move the chains. Well, our Chevrolet players of the game, the major. Applewhite off the bench, rallying the Longhorns, but still trailing here by nine. And Chris Brown of Colorado, who has done it again. 34 carries, 179 yards, and three touchdowns. The young man from Naperville, Illinois. And they are just 103 away from being crowned Big 12 champions for the first time. It's really the first time they played in this game. Yeah, the home team again, Colorado, even though they're playing here in Irving, Texas, and then predominant crowd here obviously is Texas fans. But Colorado was designated the home team, and the home team has won this Big 12 championship every time. Came back to this though. Buffing on fourth down. Major could have had that ball back. Ended up burning an extra two minutes. That's just one of the key plays, though. Second down from Major in Texas. More importantly, 103 remaining. Pockets form, throws underneath the moment. First down, clock a stop again. And he's at the 16-yard line, just inside of a minute now, 57 seconds. Texas has burned its timeout. You need to throw the ball either for first downs or touchdowns. They can't afford to throw the ball short and have the clock run. Major throws for the end zone. Jeff Bar Williams goes up in the air and could not come down with it as he was dueling Sneed. Alley oop, nice call. It's a nice call. You put your big receiver on a smaller corner that time, one on one. Old RC Owens. Alley oop. Can he get it? And then, nope. Put one hand on it, but Sneed was really behind the play there. That could have been caught.
Williams is off to the right. Johnson slot left. 48 seconds. Two behind Williams that time. And it's third down. I think Johnson and Major Applewhite were not on the same page that time. Applewhite thought he was going to run a hitch. Johnson thought it was a slant, and uh, they were confused. Applewhite said, my fault. Gives him a little signal right here. Three-step drop. Goes to throw it on the outside. In comes Gardner, and they're both not on the same page at all. Bad throw, bad throw. Third down and 10 now. And Williams out to the left, and Johnson is in the slot. Johnson dives, in zone, reaches for it. No signal, no touchdown. Down at the one with 39 seconds. That's a bad break for Texas. Vince Okru is not giving up. He has blitzed nearly every down of this drive. He's not sitting back. I'll jump off here when Jeff Chains. He stops the clock. Texas out of timeouts with 38 seconds to go. They simply cannot waste time down here because they still, after the touchdown of the extra point, are going to need an onside kick. Oh, yeah. It's coming for that onside kick, no doubt. So Mangum on the artificial turf. And we're assuming now that Texas would pound it in here for the one. But on the artificial turf sometimes, a kicker like Mangum can get that high bounce. But we'll see how that unfolds now. First things first. The Horns have got to get it in fast. Colorado will take its time, and they're going to use a timeout. So Lewis signals for a timeout. They had all three of them, and they're going to huddle up. So the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship played for the first time in Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. It seems like such a long time ago, Gary, when the Longhorns scored the first touchdown of the game, but then came a succession of turnovers, yep. which turned this game completely around. Chris Sims, three interceptions and a fumble. Colorado cashed in on all the turnovers, and that's the difference in our ball game here. I thought the first interception of the game, Killian's 73-yard return, was as big a play as we had tonight. It just they were changed the game. the game. They were controlling the game at that point. Right now, Chris Sims is hoping Major Applewhite can pull this one out. Hurt his left hand. I don't know if it's bad enough that he couldn't play again. He's holding his helmet in that left hand. But with a hot Major Applewhite, you got to let him go this second half. After he came in and threw that long yep. touchdown pass, you weren't about to take the Major out, were you? Nope. No. Chris Sims just happy Jim Mora is in his coach right now. Second down there, one. Sequence of substitutions from the defensive side of the field there. They empty out the backfield, indicating that they're going to either run Major or throw it on in. Major's going to be, he threw it incomplete. Major got it away as he was being sacked. That should be and Walrus was coming after him, and he was able to throw it away. Boy, oh boy. Didn't cross the line of scrimmage. Walrus had him wrapped up, but he just threw it, flicked it down. That could have easily been tall and grounded. Walrus comes up the corner. He's on block. You can see he's got him wrapped up, and that was intentional grounding. Then he got away with it. Now, this time, they will not leave Applewhite naked. Robin and Tressel back there to protect him. Touchdown, Texas, as he goes back to Johnson. That's the second time that they've hooked up for scores in this game. 31 seconds to go, and, caught, and uh, Texas with a life. And it comes down to number seven, Mangum. Now, if they use the other kickoff men for the onside kick, We'll have to see. They've used Pino and Smith. Mangum pounds it on through. And now, whichever of the three kickers they judge to be the best 
and the onside they'll go with here. 31 seconds to go. The onside kick versus your good hands team. Your 11 best hands players will be out there for Colorado. Touchdown, bit of a scrape play. B.J. Johnson coming off Bo Skate, coming right over the middle. Major just drills it to him. Make sure that just he gets it or no one gets it. Gets it down to a two-point game. A field goal can win it if they get that onside kick. And it looks like they're going to go back to Pino. I'm not so sure Colorado could have stopped Texas if Major Applewhite got that ball back with a six-point deficit. So the ball is on the tee for number 42. And drums right in the middle, number 33, the fullback. That tells you what kind of hands he's got right there. Didn't get it in Colorado. Jumps on the ball at the 44-yard line, and the Buffaloes with Daniel Graham, the All-American tight end, recovering the onside kick. They will win the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. The celebration has started already over there on the far side. 31 seconds. They'll take a knee now. Pesavino will bring out the offense. And uh, congratulations all around for a wonderful coaching job. Well, give it to the seniors, too. Give it to that offensive line. Bobby Pesavino. Those screen passes. Two third and eights. He picked it up. Daniel Graham blocking all day. Gerard, Rogers, Michael Lewis. What a senior class. Leftovers from Rick Neuheis will win the Big 12 championship. The traditional bounce. <laughs> and it'll wash away the memories of that ill-fated pick. The trick play. And uh, congratulations to Gary Barnett and the Colorado Buffaloes, who have won the Big 12 championship. And they did it with style, beating Nebraska and then Texas, a team that destroyed them 41 to 7 the first time they played. And there's Jack Aroot. Coach, congratulations. Does this deserve consideration for the Buffaloes to go to the Rose Bowl? Oh, I don't know. I'm just awful <laughs> damn glad Flores kicked that field goal to take my butt out of the ringer on that. Yeah, let's talk call. about that call for a minute. No, I thought we had it set up. We just we didn't execute it. And that was it. That was my call. And you know, I almost screwed our team, but uh, you know, Flores saved me. So what's next? A BCS ball berth for sure, but is this a strong enough statement to the pollsters? I, I don't know. I'll think about that tomorrow. I, I'm, a, I'm a believer in whatever they vote on is, is the way it's going to be. We have a very good football team, and we play with a great deal of heart. And uh, this team did it the way a team is supposed to do it. They won the Big 12, and they won it with great heart. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You, Jack. Love an honest man. Gary Barnett and Colorado win it 39-37. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Don't forget, Green Bay at Jacksonville on Monday Night Football. This is ABC Sports continuing the tradition of excellence. So long, everybody. This is a live picture of Texas Stadium where the CU Buffs held off the Texas Longhorns to take home the Big 12 Championship. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of 7 News. I'm Mitch Jelnick. And I'm Ann Trujillo. We have a lot to talk about with tonight's Big 12 Championship, including the post-game interviews, highlights from the game, and other college matchups, plus a Buffs breakdown of the game and a look at what's next for CU. Well, let's get right to Lionel Bienvenu and Mike Nolan, guys. Boy. Thank you very much, Mitch and Ann. Welcome to the special seven sports presentation of the CU Texas postgame show. Mike Nolan, 
What a game. The Buffs jump out big like they did against Nebraska and to hold on for dear life there at the end. We thought it was going to be a cakewalk <laughs> after they took that uh, big uh, lead, but uh, not to be. And back in August when they lost to Fresno State by two, they were left for dead. And they won that game. Of course, it's always woulda, coulda, shoulda. They'd be going to the Rose Bowl on that later to play for national championship. That's but a right. terrific win tonight. They would be 11 and one, but they will take 10 and two, of course, and the Big 12 championship and a BCS bowl berth as well. Let's take a look at one of the players that decided this game. Texas up seven to nothing and looking for more. It would have been 14 to nothing, but Sims got picked off by Aaron Killian. And look at Big Aaron, the linebacker. Taking it down the field, they're going to chase him down after 74 yards. And a couple of plays later, Chris Brown from 10 yards out ties the game up. The Buffs never looked back 39 to 37. Actually, they did look back a little bit, that's for sure, because the final again, 39 to 37. But they got the W, and they're headed for a BCS bowl berth. Let's get now to the field at Texas Stadium. Steve Gottsag in there with the senior, Daniel Graham, who played a big part in this game. Steve? Yeah, as he always does, Lionel. Uh, Big 12 championship, 2001. After that Fresno State game, you probably never thought you guys had this chance to, tonight. We knew we just had to fight strong, you know, take one game at a time. You knew, we knew we had to get victories, and we got it, and we got the biggest one today. You really turned the tables. The last game you time you played these guys, 41-7, to they beat you. They turned your four turnovers into a lot of points to blow you out of the stadium. They turned it over four times in the first half. You guys took advantage of them. 26 points off turnovers in the first half. That's why you won this game. Well, we didn't give Texas a real Colorado football game last time. We came down here, we executed, we worked hard, and we took care of business. Talk about the running backs again. I know you, you, you had the one pass for the touchdown. The running game again torched one of the best defenses in the nation. Hey, we have a good running, running game. Everybody should know that right now. We should get a lot of respect for our run game, and we can't be stopped. Talked to the Fiesta Bowl uh, director today. He said that CU will be going to the Fiesta Bowl, a chance to finish in the top four in the country. Unbelievable for you guys. Hey, it's, it's party time. You know, we're going to the Fiesta Bowl. It's home. And you, and you look at it right now. You now own every single tight end receiving record and see you breaking your coach's records. I know you're going to remind him of it after the game, too. Oh, I'm going to remind him, but he always lets me know there's one record I don't have. You know, he threw a pass in the game, and I, he told me he has that. Last question I'll ask you. When, uh, on the fake punt, when they returned that for a touchdown and made this a game all of a sudden, what were you thinking? Oh, it was scary. You know, we just we had to get behind our defense and uh, hope that, you know, our defense just came through when they had to. You know, they made big plays. Daniel Graham out of Thomas Jefferson High School, like myself. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Lionel, we got a lot more coming up live here at Texas Stadium. We're going to toss it back to you, but we'll be back very soon with a lot, lot more live coverage of the CU Big 12 championship game. Thank you, Steve. We will see you back then. That Fiesta okay. Bowl, of course, on Channel 7, Denver 7, New Year's Day, January 1st. So that's a good thing for us as well as for CU. Uh, let's talk about this, Chief. Uh, I mean, they jumped out huge. Uh, Texas did because they they knew that they were playing for the national championship not alone the Big 12 championship we talked before the game uh, the worst thing that could have happened for CU was Florida to be upset of course by the uh, uh, Tennessee Volunteers because that meant obviously the Longhorns could have gone to the national championship game Texas came out loaded for bear they were dominating the game early on till Killian's interception the other big play that stands out in my mind was running into the kicker late oh, in the yeah. game he had the feeling of Applewhite got that ball back down by six, he was going to drive him down the field. Yeah, it was 36 to 30 at that point, and you figured, yeah, Texas might score, and that missed extra point early on would have cost to you, but it did not. Destiny was on the buff side, and uh, right now let's go back to Texas Stadium where Steve Gottsagen has another senior. Steve? Thanks a lot, Lion. I'm joined by Victor Rogers, senior offensive lineman. Two weeks in a row, you guys beat up on one of the top defenses of the nation. You guys ran all over them. You're the Big 12 champs. Yeah, we are, and like I said, it's just a great feeling. We heard Florida loss today. So now we just got to sit back and wait and see where we're going to play at. Well, I talked to the Fiesta Bowl director. He says CU will be coming to the Fiesta Bowl. You have a chance now to finish top three or four in the country. You think back to that loss of Fresno State. You guys come a long way, not too long of a time. Yeah, we definitely have. And like I said, it's just a great feeling to prove everybody wrong and just show the character that we got in our locker room, you know. Everybody counted us out after that Fresno State game, and the first time the Longhorns blew us out, we knew that wasn't the real team. So today, we know that as an offense, if we don't give up the ball and we don't have turnovers, we're a pretty hard offense to stop. Well, speaking of turnovers, Texas turned it over four times. You guys turned that into 26 first-half points. That's really when you won this game. Our defense helped us. I mean, like I said, they put us in some great positions. They confused Sims, hit them, made them throw the ball up, and they had to bring Applewhite in. And, I mean, even though Applewhite's a great quarterback, it's hard to come in when you haven't played all year and lead a team to victory. So our defense put us in some great positions today, and we just capitalized. What can you say about Chris Brown? Chris Carter says all he does is score touchdowns. All Chris Brown does is score touchdowns. He's a bull. I mean, he really is. But like I said, 
this, the running backs have carried us this year. I mean, we got it easy. Everybody gives us a lot of praise, but those guys have been hitting it, and the wide receivers have been blocking downfield. So it's a team effort when you've got people who can run the rock like that. Now, with Florida losing today, you, you could be three or four in the BCS. You may have, a, I mean, a slight, slight shot at the Rose Bowl. Do you think you deserve a shot at the national championship? Even though we have two losses, I think we've defeated probably the two best teams in the country. Personally, I'm biased. I think it'd be hard to turn <laughs> us down, but... You know, we'll just see what happens. We took care of our end of the bargain. It's up to the computers now. I got to ask you something else. The other day when we were uh, talking last Monday night, in fact, when um, Coach Mac Brown said, you guys are the best offensive line in the nation, you thought he was starting to play the game. You said, well, let's wait and see what happens after the game. Well, you killed him. So now, are you guys the best offensive line in the nation? We'll let you guys decide that. We'll let you guys decide <laughs> you that. Promise me. We don't want to give anybody else any fire for the next time we go and play. All right, go celebrate with the team. Congratulations. We'll see you in Phoenix. And uh, actually, right now, your job's in jeopardy. <laughs> I got a couple years before you replace me. Don't go away, though, because right now, What's going on? another man. How do you feel? Big 12 champion. Feels awesome. I mean, it can't get no better feeling. Everybody thought we couldn't do it. We just proved everybody wrong. And, hey, we finna celebrate tonight. Now, Coach said you defensive backs, especially you, who's going to single you guys out, said you guys are going to be the key to this game. And it was a little tough at the first, but you guys stepped up. You made the picks. Yeah. You guys got Sims out of the game. Well, we came out a little, I think, too hot. And, um... We just had to cool off, and then we came out and we just played real well after that, and it was just on after that. <laughs> now, on the, on the fake punt, when all of a sudden they made this thing a game, you guys had to be a little worried. Yeah, we got a little worried. I mean, it was a design play. We thought it was going to work. They, Babers made a great play. We just had to play defense from there. You think back to that Fresno State loss when the whole state gave up on this program, and now you guys are going to be probably number three, number four in the country. You guys come a long way. Yeah, we came very far. I mean, and it's a wonderful feeling right now. I can't even describe the feeling. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, Donald Strickland, go celebrate. Congratulations, Big 12 champion. Lionel and Mike, I'm going to toss it back to you. We're trying to get some more live guests for you, but until then, we got a lot more coming back from the Big 12 championship. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Mayhem okay. on the field there at Texas Stadium. Hey, the number one team in the nation, the number three team in the nation, Nebraska, Texas, two weeks in a row, 101 points the Buffs put up. That offensive line, that running game, they showed that they certainly deserve a consideration here for the national title. I don't think there's any question about that. They're right now, the CU Buffaloes are playing as good a football as any team. The two best teams right now are Miami and, and CU. I don't right. think there's any doubt about that. Yeah. Whether they get to meet, probably not going to happen. No, nah, probably not. But you defeat the number one and the number three teams two weeks in a row. That says a lot. All right, let's check out some of the highlights here. Mike Nolan, see how this thing whole went, uh, went down. It was dicey early on. <laughs> Ralphie leading the team out. But after that, the buffs were tight and they were sluggish early. But Texas, they were sharp. Scored in the first drive to go up 7-0. Then the game turned. The horns were driving. It could have been 14-0, but Aaron Killian picked Chris Sims off and running 73 yards inside the 15-yard line. Then on third down, Chris Brown paid off. Look at him just power his way into the end zone. And that tied at 7-7, and the turnaround had began. Huge turnaround. Then to the second quarter, the offensive line was inspired. Bobby Purify ran through the gaping holes down the sideline 50 yards before he's pushed out of bounds. That set up Chris Brown for another score, 16-7 buffs, 22-10 buffs, then the defense dominated. Continue to rattle Chris Sims. Medford Moore stepped in front of that one, and let's go the other way, boys. 29-10 after that return, but right before the half, it got interesting, Mike. Oh, I did, because Sims uh, had to go to the bench, injured hand, and uh, enter uh, Applewhite, and they suddenly had a rally going. I don't know how Applewhite sees the field with that helmet that low on his head. Look at him there, though. Class act, huh? Taunting the Buffaloes. Hey, Major, check the scoreboard. 29-17, <laughs> buffs at the half. Opening drive of the second half, Chris Brown scored his ninth touchdown in two games. That made it. The buffs with a victory. 39-37, as we said, they held on. There was the dunk, the old Gatorade in the eyes for Gary Barnett, but he certainly did not mind at that point he was very candid i thought at the end of the game when he said flores got his fanny out of the ringer for him because of that fake punt and uh had they lost this game that fake punt uh, the, the media would have never let him live, live it down no doubt about it but they got a field goal uh, the, the roughing the kicker penalty there was certainly a key 36 to 30 uh was at at that point they held on 39 uh, 37. let's talk about the keys of the game you, you've got to touch on the turnovers in the first half the last time they met it was CU turning the ball over to Texas, and it ended up 41-7. to But in the first half here, four turnovers turned into four touchdowns for the Buffs. Yeah, I think poetic justice almost is the turnovers killed the Buffs in that big loss on October 20th. 
and it was the turnovers that killed Chris Sims and the Texas Longhorns today. Sims looked like a rookie. He just, he kind of came unraveled, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, they made him pay, of course, Major Applewhite, the senior, got in the game late, and he's the guy that made it a football game because Sims had no idea what was going on after the Buffs got that first turnover, and that was a turning point. But again, we talked about the offensive line. You heard Victor Rogers say it. Let us decide if they're the best O-line in the country. I don't think there's any doubt with the way they came back after those turnovers and pushed the ball in the end zone with Chris Brown and Bobby Purified. Yeah, Brown had just, uh, and, and Marcus Houston never got in the game. Here's an All-American <laughs> yeah. high school kid, right. one of the most sought-after guys in the country, and couldn't get in the game. And uh, Brown is just, you know, he got in the doghouse a little bit there a few games ago, but now he's back and he is just, uh, he's talking about a power runner. And he will be back next year. Nine touchdowns against Nebraska and Texas in two weeks. And there's Purify with a long one as well. 179 yards for Chris Brown. And you can't say enough about CU and the offensive line and how they held on to this game under adversity. And now a programming note. Grab your pencil or crayons or whatever uh, you write with and some paper. Write this down. A week from tomorrow, right here on Denver 7, we present an AFC West battle, the Seahawks and the Broncos, live from Invesco Field at Mile High. Kickoff at 6.30. Join us starting at 5 o'clock for a massive pregame newscast and postgame coverage as well. Break time, but much more on the way here. We're going to pay a tribute to the class of 2001. CU seniors pulled together this year and made it a certainly a special season. Plus a wild and woolly day in football stadiums across the country. The Air Force facing adversity and flying high. Stay with us on this special post-game edition of 7 Sports. Sims doesn't look at his direction. Comes back and there is his third interception thrown to the middle to Medford Moore who picks it off. And Moore breaks free. Touchdown, Colorado. Touchdown. Welcome back to the show. Hey, after they beat Nebraska last week, that was one of the biggest wins in CU history. Now they followed up with another one, 39-37 over Texas to win the Big 12 championship. Let's go back to Texas Stadium and check in again live with Steve Gottsagen. Steve? You know, Lionel, that play you just showed, the Medford Moore touchdown return off the, the Chris Sims pass, that basically told the story. You think about the four turnovers in the first half, leading to 26 CU points. They built the big lead. Of course, the fake punt got them in a little bit of trouble, made it a closer game than it really needed to be. But uh, in the end, Jeremy Flores saved Gary Barnett, like he said, after the game, they get the 39-37 win. Now, Bobby Pesaveno, making his fourth straight start for the Buffs, was asked after the game if he really thought they could beat this team after losing to him so badly early in the year, 41-7. Uh, yeah, we knew we were capable of it, but I mean, they did a great job. It was awesome. It was terrific. Bobby, once again, the offensive line does it two straight weeks. Oh, they're, they're, they're best in the country by far. And they dominated this football game, and that's why we won. Bobby, is this the best college football team in the country right now? Uh, it might be the hottest right now. I mean, I would play anybody. I go to war with any of these guys against any team. Does it make it even more special because you're up against a defense that's so great against the run and you're able to move the ball? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're a great team and a great defense. you got to give them credit. But, I mean, it was ugly, but we got it done. Your defense. Talk about the way your defense played. Awesome. You know, they talk about the uh, offensive line, and offensive line was key. Right now you see the, the, 19, the 2001 Big 12 champion, CU Buffaloes, bringing the Big 12 trophy over here. Let's take a look at that trophy. Daniel Graham. Oh, got him. We're going to we're gonna, actually, Daniel's a little uh, interrupted right now, but uh, we'll, we'll get to him in a moment. He talked about the offensive line, like I said, off, uh, obviously Lionel. The offensive line played a huge role. 380 yards last week. They got rushing against Nebraska. Texas, number one in the nation, giving up only 77 yards a game rushing. The Buffs had 125 in the first half. That's the kind of domination the offensive line has been having. Right now, Bobby Pesaveno joins me. Bobby, I know you talked about it before, but you're Big 12 champions. Did you think this was possible after that game at Fresno State? Uh, yeah, we knew it was possible, but uh, you know, that was our goal from the beginning of the season. Coach Barnett stood in front of the world and told them we're coming to Dallas. We made it here. It wasn't pretty, but we got it done. Now, you said the other day, you said that anybody could have played quarterback against Nebraska and won that game because of the offensive line. Not to take anything away from you today, but again, Chris Brown was unbelievable. The offensive line was unbelievable. Made your job pretty easy. They win the football game. The offensive line, the running backs. It's, it's our show. That's what we do. That's the way they get it done. You gotta like holding that Big 12 championship. What, what does that feel to put that trophy in your hand? Oh, it feels awesome. Yeah, we reached our goal. It's the greatest feeling ever. So you, think, now you think about how far you've come now. From backup, you accepted your role as a backup quarterback. Four straight starts now. You lead this team to the Big 12 championship. Is there any doubt who should be starting the Fiesta Bowl for the Colorado Buffs? No, I got no comment about that. No comment. 
Hey, we're the champ. Uh, uh, Craig's our starter. If, if he yeah. he's healthy, it's a coach's decision. I ain't worried about it. You got to feel the way that, the way you perform. You got to feel good about that because you've stepped up week after week and you've taken this team to the championship. Oh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter who's in there. The job's gonna get done if it's me or Craig. Whatever they decide, I'll support Craig and Craig will support me, and you know, we'll just keep on playing. Let's see that. Show us that trophy. Let's take a look at the Big 12 trophy. Sign me up, baby. Sign me up. Big 12 champs. I'm going I'm to ask you a dumb question. How does it feel to be the 2001 Big 12 champ? You know what, baby? It feels great, man. It feels great. Nobody believed in this team but us, man. It's been us all along. And to be with this group of guys, it's an honor, man. It's an honor to be on this team. It's an honor to be with this group of guys, man. You, you come into a hostile environment, they say it's a neutral site. There's nah, at least 50,000 Texas fans. Nah, man, this crowd was into it, man. They got some good fans and they had a good squad. And, you know, kudos to them for getting here. But, you know, it's our turn to get our ring, so. Talk about Arizona. Looks like going to the Fiesta Bowl. It's almost a lock right now. Yeah, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good yeah, way to spend New Year's. Cool, man. I'm, I'm gonna, I ain't worried about that. You know, we'll, we'll worry about the bowl when we get there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna relish this, and I don't care where we go, man. I'm, <laughs> this is cool right now. This is cool. All right, congratulations. Thanks, man. All right, we got a lot more coming up here from Texas Stadium. Lionel and Mike, I'm gonna toss it back to you guys right now. All right, thank you very much, Steve. I gotta ask you one question, though, Steve, about character. This team got down to Texas. Texas was driving again. Hey, it was easy to probably say, hey, we're in Texas. Texas is number three. We're done. But these guys stuck together and pulled out again. Exactly. You think about it. Texas was ahead in this game, 7-zip and driving. And also Aaron, Aaron Killian comes up with that interception, takes it all the way back 73 yards. That changes the face of this game. If Texas goes up 14-0 on the bus in this environment with 50,000 people in those ugly burnt orange jerseys, this game could be over. That changed the face of this game. And they added three more turnovers after that. That was the difference in this game. You're right, Steve. All right, thank you. They are burnt orange right now, for sure. They're burnt they are because CU burned them tonight. All right, Steve, we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. I don't Mike, think uh, Steve got to chew up on Austin after that uh, remark. You know, one thing we didn't talk about was on the Moore uh, touchdown return is the play that uh, Benson, their great freshman running back, ran into Williams, the big lineman, and both of them had to leave the game. Benson never came back. He's a terrific runner who was great in the October 20th game for Texas. Yeah, and he certainly had a good game going up until that point. Yeah, those two guys collided. They both left the game. Uh, the big lineman, the great running back, gone, and CU goes on to win it. Now, Bobby Pesaveno, you listen to him, he could run for mayor of Boulder. He's a great politician saying, but the, there's got to be a way that Pesaveno starts this game oh, in the Fiesta Bowl. I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, uh, Oaks is 95%, uh, so he probably could start uh, the game is, what, a couple of weeks away? Oh, a month away. And uh, he is going to be healthy enough to start, but Pesso Vento's the guy. And uh, yeah. journeyman quarterback. Interesting story. Here's a kid that started at Miami of Ohio. Uh, didn't get the player, didn't like it, dropped out, wound up at Fort Scott Community College in Kansas. Comes in here, they say he's going to be a starter. Then uh, Oaks is recruited. He becomes a starter. He was there when they needed him. Terrific story. Fort Scott to Tempe. We're going to Quite produce the journey. movie. You and I are going to produce the movie. It'll be <laughs> All playing right. at a theater you do the you. screenplay, and I'll, uh, I'll do the casting. Let's go back out now live to Texas Stadium. Uh, Steve Godsagan has another uh, member of the Buffs championship team. Steve? Thanks a lot, guys. I'm joined by Robbie Robinson. And Robbie, we were just talking, and I was talking a little bit before this. When Aaron Killian picked off that pass when Texas was driving, they were going to make it 14 zip. They had all the momentum. You're in a hostile environment. I think that was the key play of the game. Well, I agree. I'd agree. Aaron's done a great job for us all season. He, he made a great read. Picked off the ball. It's unfortunate he didn't score. I know he would have wanted that for himself, but just the same, it stopped their momentum, gave us a chance to get back in the game. And Medford Moore had a great interception for a touchdown. I couldn't be more proud of my defense today. And Coach Barnett said the defensive backs were going to be the key to this game. You had to stop Sims. Now, he kind of stopped himself a little bit with the turnovers, and then he pulled himself out of the game. Well, that, you know, that's, turnovers are part of the game. Last, the last time these two teams met, you know, we were on the, on the other end of that. This time... You know, we came out and made some plays on defense, and Coach Barnett did call out the secondary, and I, I think today we made a lot of plays. We made a lot of plays, and, you know, this is, this, is why you, <laughs> this is why you play football, and this is why we came to Colorado, and it, I couldn't feel better. Now, now, they call it a neutral site, but you guys won the Big 12 championship in Texas, basically on Texas home field. Now you're stomping all over the field. It's got to feel great. Well, we've won, we've won uh, games on the road all year, so we weren't really looking at it as hostile territory. We had a job to do. We were staying focused, and we came in here and got it done. You know, we had great fan support. We didn't have a lot of them. There was a, a ton of Texas fans here, but we had enough. They came and supported us, and I couldn't, be, I couldn't be more thankful to our fans who came out tonight. Winning a championship, though, on the road, that's got to feel a little sweet. Well, it does, but we don't care if we would have played it in our backyard, in the street, here at Texas Stadium. We came to win, and that's what we got done tonight. Yo, you You've been to Phoenix we before? Don't care, Robbie. <laughs> I, I have been to Phoenix, care. but I'll be looking forward to another trip, if not, if not a trip to Pasadena, because I think right now we're playing the best football in America. 
So you want a playoff? Go Coach Barnett said there should be no playoff. You think there should be a playoff? You guys want to play for the national championship? I just think right now that there, there's not a team who would want to face the Colorado Buffaloes. And uh, with that being said, I think we should have a legitimate shot at the national championship through whatever road, you know, by, by a poll, by a playoff. I don't care. This is a good team, and I think we deserve a shot. How do you feel about your offensive line? I can't say enough. They're dominant. They, they're dominant, and there's no defensive line in this country that I want to see Andre Giroud, Victor Rogers, Wayne Lucier, Marwan Hayes, and Justin Bates. <laughs> All right, guys. You know, Fiesta, baby. Fiesta, Fiesta, baby. Don't forget about that. Fiesta, Fiesta. <sighs> They're not talking about dinner, Lionel. They're talking about the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe. That's coming up January 2nd. Now, that's where the Buffs are going to be playing. I think they'll be playing Georgia. All right, really? Steve. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, that Fiesta Bowl right here on uh, Denver 7. That trophy is going to need to be wiped down. It's got some fingerprints on it. We'll be back with more right after this. Here is Trump. Back in motion. And Purify has the whole play. And open. He's in a race for the end zone. 20. They've got the angle. He's out of bounds. Another great running performance by the CU Buffs. As you saw here on Denver 7, CU and Texas in the Big 12 championship game, and the Buffs take it, 39-37. Chris Brown, another big night, three touchdowns, including that 11-yarder into the end zone. The Buffs led 36-17, but Texas stayed in it. CU decided to go for a fake punt. Robert Hodge, the backup quarterback, horrible pass. Intercepted by Roderick Babers, he went all the way. All of a sudden, it was a six-point game, but a huge roughing the punter penalty helped CU hold on 39 to 37. Right now, let's check the scene in Boulder. We go to Mitch Jellicker and Ann Trujillo on the news desk, guys. All right, thanks, Lionel. Well, as you can imagine, fans all over Colorado were holding their breath during the fourth quarter, waiting <laughs> for the game to end. Nowhere was that more true than in Boulder. That's where we find Senators reporter Julie Hayden tonight. Julie, fans have got to be happy with this one. From this end, it's got to be got to be dying on that Thank end. Thank you, Julie, for that recovery. All right, we're going to go back to Lionel with more on the game. All right, thanks. Texas Stadium, the place to be right now if you're a buff. Steve Gottsagen, the man on the scene. For more live post game, we go live to Irving. Steve? Thanks a lot, Lionel. I'm joined by the man that Gary Barnett says is one of the top linebackers in the country. You're also a Big 12 champion now. It's got to feel pretty good. It feels great, pal. We've been working for this for a long time, and our quest came true here. Defense had to step up. You knew Sims was going to be tough. Yeah. You get four turnovers in the first half. He actually pulls himself out of the game, and you guys run away with the 26 points off turnovers in the first half. I mean, we knew we had to come out and, and put some pressure on these guys. I mean, that's the way you beat this team. And we came out and did it, and we got him out early, and Applewhite came in. He did a real good job, so we, we got the job done. That's what's important. I got to ask you about, I got to ask you about Major Applewhite real quick. When he throws that touchdown, and he comes taunt in the bench, that, that get, get, get you guys fired up at all? Oh, very fired up. I mean, that's not something you do, you know. That's something that hurts people, but we came out and we showed them, so. Talk about the turnovers again. 26 points, like I said, that was the key. That's the reason you lost the first game, 41-7. to seven. Yeah. You guys totally turned the tables this time. Oh, uh, we did. I mean, it was a, it, almost the exact reversal. I mean, we, we needed a few more points for it, but it was all right. I mean, we came out, we got turnovers when we needed them, and our offense capitalized. That's how you win. Now, you, you, you got to think back now to that Fresno State game, the five turnovers he had in that game. Yeah. Without that game, there's a shot you're playing for the national championship this year, except, but you still have a shot to finish in the top three or four in the Fiesta Bowl. True, true. I, I try not to think about that stuff too much. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20. I, mean, I wish it would have happened, but it didn't. But we're going BCS, so it's all right. You think about the fake punt, made the game a little closer than people need. You get a little tired, you get a little upset there on the field? Not upset. We, we got a model that we don't care. Whatever happens, we're going to deal with it and go out and, and play our football. And you stepped up big, obviously, because then you had to answer, and you, you had a long drive, you kind of ran out the clock, gave up a late touchdown, but then the field goal sealed it. Yeah, I mean, it did. We, we stepped up when we needed to, you know. We got a couple couple good calls with us and made a couple big plays. Jeremy get the game ball for that field goal to seal it? I don't know, he might. <laughs> We're still looking. All right, Sean, enjoy the rest of it. Congratulations, Big 12 championship. All right, Lionel, we got a lot more coming up here. There's still a lot of celebrating going on. The guys are finally getting back in the locker room. I think they want to play with that B40. trophy a little bit more. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Okay. Man, Nebraska may still play for the national championship. Texas 
will not, but the Buffs have beaten both of them in two weeks in a row. Now, the 2001 CU seniors were 3-8 and eight as juniors. Opening day loss to Fresno State, they could have packed it in. They could have fallen apart, mailed it in for the rest of the year and move on. But as we know, they did just the opposite and are still having a heck of a year. They play another game. Right now, we pay tribute to those seniors who stuck it out and stuck together. My senior year to be here, um, just um, playing around this group of guys who've been around for five years now. Um, I go to war with any one of them. There have been times where I, I haven't been getting it done, and I'll look to my right and look to my left, and the guys will pick me up, and we'll get through it. the best feeling in the world, especially for the guys who came in in my class in 97. There was kind of a feeling among us that we were kind of the downfall of the program going into this year. It seemed like everything just started going bad once we got here. So for us to be able to, you know, kind of turn things around and hopefully give, you know, these guys a torch to carry on after this year would be mean a lot to us. I don't think anybody could ask for you know, a better way to finish their college career than the way we've had this year. I mean, I'm just proud to be a part of it and you know, proud to be a contributor. And I, I couldn't ask for anything else for my last season. From Denver 7, this is 7 News. Welcome back and thanks for staying up with us. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Mitch Jelnicker. Obviously tonight's programming has been pushed back somewhat, about 20 minutes or so, because of the Big 12 championship game. And we'll have much more from Texas Stadium coming up in just a few minutes. But first, the road to Texas Stadium went through Iowa State and Nebraska before the CU Buffs could make the most of their trip to the Big 12 championship, stealing the trophy from the Longhorns. 7 News reporter Julie Hayden is in Boulder tonight, where fans are cranking up the celebrations, aren't they, Julie? That's right. I think uh, Mitch, the folks here are pretty excited. They just got quiet right to be on TV. As you can see, they take cues pretty darn well here in Boulder. Obviously very excited. And I gotta tell you, this is just a taste. Let's take a look at what it was like earlier tonight. The agony and the ecstasy. of CU football. Hey! Hey! The more CU dominated in Texas, the louder it got at the Barrel House in Boulder. Boss, what can I say after last year? This is total redemption. Return to dominance. Go CU! I'm very proud of the Buffs this year. And the outcome of the game? Never in doubt. I was really one to pick them from the beginning of the year. They're doing great. Any doubt? Out of my mind. Fight, 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 fight. Now that was the end of the CU fight song. These guys here tell me they know the CU fight song. Let's see. Take it away. Fight, CU down the field. CU must win. Fight, fight for victory. CU knows no defeat. So The conductor, all right. They're pretty darn good. Practicing that all night. Thank you, Julie. Well, they could probably use some more, obviously. But now that the Buffs are champions of the Big 12, what's next? More importantly, who is next? Well, Lionel joins us now one more time with 
hopefully some of those answers, all of those answers. We have answers for you guys. By the way, maybe they could lip sync that thing next time. <laughs> <Should we> try <laughs> yeah. No, nice job, nice job. <laughs> They're headed for Tempe, Arizona and the Fiesta Bowl. And the Buffs are playing the best college football of any team in the nation right now. They held on tonight to beat Texas, as you saw here on Denver 7, and win that Big 12 championship. But to put up 62 points on Nebraska and 39 on Texas, 101 points in two weeks on those defenses, the Buffs deserve every bit of a BCS bowl berth. The Longhorns turned the ball over four times in the first half, and CU turned it into four touchdowns. This one, Medford Moore takes it all the way in. Thanks to friendly fire, two horns hooked each other right there, and Medford went the distance, 29 to 10. The Buffs held on to win it, 39-37. It got hairy and nasty in the fourth quarter, but again, the Buffs are the champions, and they're headed for the Fiesta Bowl. The opponent yet to be determined because we've got LSU and Tennessee playing in the SEC title game next week, which will help figure out who goes where and who's ranked where. But see you at the $11 million plus payout in a BCS Bowl January 1st, right here on Denver 7 and ABC. So it's sweet for all of us. It's the important sure. part. Yeah. And those players were just a little excited about it. That's just a little. Right. Karen, they, hopefully they hold on to that trophy and don't drop it. You bet. That, uh, yeah. All right, we'll check back with yeah, you here we'll in just a bit. We'll have more later. All right. And now, 7 Sports with Lionel Bienvenu. All right, it appears right now that if Tennessee beats LSU in next week's SEC title game, then... Oregon and CU will play in the Fiesta Bowl, but we'll have to see what happens next week. Let's talk about tonight. Before they took the field against CU tonight, Texas knew Tennessee had beaten Florida, which meant the Longhorns weren't only playing for the Big 12 championship, a shot at the national title was on the line. But the Buffs also knew if they beat Texas, a sweet BCF payoff was at the other end for them. So Ralphie led the boys out. But the Buffs were tight and sluggish early on, and Texas scored on the first drive to go up 7 0. Looking for more here, but uh, no, sir. Chris Sims is picked by Aaron Killian. The linebacker headed for pay dirt. Almost, he's chased down like the injured wildebeest on the Discovery Channel always is. But that got him inside the 15-yard line, and Chris Brown from 10 yards out, diving into the end zone, 7-7. Seven to seven. That was a huge turnaround for the second quarter now. The offensive line inspired, opening up huge holes, and Bobby Purify ran through one of them. 50 yards before he's pushed out of bounds, that set up Chris Brown for another touchdown, 16-7 buffs. It was 22-10, and the defense continued to rattle Chris Sims. Medford Moore steps in front of that pass. Two Texans collide right there, knocked each other out of the play, and Moore smelled the end zone. Touchdown there. Now we move on here. Major Applewhite took the place of the uh, banged-up Chris Sims, and he threw that touchdown right there, right before the half, and then he taunted the CU bench. He said, come on out. See, you just said, hey, look at the scoreboard, dummy. Later, Chris Brown scored his ninth touchdown in two games. 39-37 turned out to be the final after a wild and wacky fourth quarter, but Barnett got the shower, which he certainly did not mind. For more post-game reaction now, let's go live to Texas Stadium again. And Steve Gottsagan has been on duty there all night. And Steve, uh, what a night for the CU Buffs. <laughs> what a night, what a season for the CU Buffs. Who'd have thought way back when they lost that opening game with five turnovers of Fresno State that right now they'd be competitive and be considered one of the shots of getting a national championship shot. Of course, they probably won't, but the Buffs playing some great football right now. Now, Gary Barnett, before the season, set the goal of playing for and winning the Big 12 championship. And they did it, 39 to 37. Like you just said, Gary Barnett, obviously a very happy head coach. We set a pretty lofty goal at the beginning of the year to come back to Dallas and win the Big 12 championship, and uh, it's going to feel great to reach that goal. Yeah, I'm so proud of these guys. I'm so proud of the way that they've uh, fought through so many things, and I mean that's and that's what good teams do. But um, you know, I, I just think our team represents what a team is supposed to represent. You know, we're, we're we got a lot of guys, not a lot of. Uh, household names, a few of them more and more the play, more we play like we have, but uh, uh, we've had guys go down, other guys step up. We've had great attitudes on this team, and so I'm just, I'm just uh, proud to be a part of it. Is that your game ball or Jeremy Flores's? <laughs> that was the last, that was a ball on the last snap of the game. We'll figure out what happens to do it. Jeremy, uh, your favorite player tonight, it sounds like. Jeremy's my favorite player tonight, right. <laughs> Talk about the offensive line. I know Mac Brown called him the best in the nation of the day. You said we'll see after the game. They look pretty good again tonight. They blocked really well tonight, and uh, they had a couple Warriors running behind them. And, you know, you, when you say offensive line, you got to throw Dan Graham in that, and you've got to throw uh, Brandon Drum in as well. And so, you know, it, this wasn't the most 
the, the prettiest game that we played. But boy, it was hard fought. And uh, a lot of guys made played, and our defense just uh, rallied and made plays when we had to. Bobby Pesavento, four straight great games starting. Yeah, unbelievable, huh? What a story. But what a great kid, too. So, I mean, he's typical of what this team is about. Fiesta Bowl, you excited about uh, the trip to Tempe? Actually, I'm, I'm excited about getting on the plane and going home, and then I'll think about Tempe tomorrow. So. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Thank I appreciate you. it. Congratulations again. Coach, going to wait till tomorrow to think about Tempe. The players have been thinking about it ever since that game ended when they were celebrating out here with that trophy. Lionel's been an unbelievable night here. The Buffs, Big 12 championships. I know you predicted it, but I never thought they had a chance. <laughs> well, back to back on Denver 7, Steve. Uh, it's been a big week for the Buffs. Nebraska, then Texas, and they're on the way to Tempe. Thanks a lot, Steve. Good work out there tonight. Okay.